So, welcome guys back to another episode of DP and Me. I'm DP, and who's me, you ask? It's Kamikaze. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? That, that's Kamikaze sound waves with a zero instead of a O and a Z instead of a S at the end of sound waves. Which is why you can't find his channel on YouTube. Yeah, apparently so, dude. Yeah, it's all good though. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man. You got to change that shit. You got to. <laughs> I've I've been on the fence about it, man. But it's like that. That's like been my identity. Like that's always been like my alter ego type thing. So it's kind of hard for me to switch it up. But no, I realize like even like when I'm out in the wild, I'm like you know like oh you got a YouTube channel. I'm like yes, yeah, it's, it's sound waves. Like what the what are you doing? What why why all this stuff? Like and they'll and they'll come back and be like five minutes or a couple weeks later, like dude, I can't find her channel. <laughs> I gotcha. Under well, understandably so. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, um, you can go into your YouTube settings and you can actually create a custom link for your channel. I think you should call it something that's like a shorthand of it, like Kami Sound. Just well, apparently you can't do that until you have 100 subscribers, and I don't have the luxury of uh, that. Oh. I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm pretty low-key, dude, apparently. Uh, and well, maybe the name thing has a lot to do with it. Uh, well, neither, neither uh, error there. As of right now, you're at 99, so you're practically there. So uh, everybody, look for Kamikaze sound waves. Dude, on give me YouTube. one. All I need is one, yeah. dude. Just fucking. Just, just one, one, yeah. So he can get that channel name. He can get a link that he can share. That's not really hard to share. Yeah, much obliged. Much so obliged. Uh, tell us about your channel, man. Um, I do just like a bunch of random stuff, dude. Like uh, my my whole like thing that I was really. Uh, really down for like really really like doing was like game reviews i was just always and have still like to this day i'm just intrigued about reviews uh that goes for movies games etc cetera, etc cetera. i just love watching reviews and they inspired me enough to really want to do reviews i always thought like you know i could bring something new to the table uh but um it is what it is like i started doing like uh, let's plays um i do um i've done a few movie reviews uh not very very many but um, I do some streaming here and there. I've done some quick skits like where I just like, you know, spend five minutes and do like some stupid thought that I had in my head and like I act it out. Uh, just a bunch of random stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But most of it's video game related. Some of it's like just random comedy stuff. Um, but for the most part, it, it all revolves around video games for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your most popular video revolves around a Hot Pocket. <laughs> it does. The most random thing in the whole world, dude. I put a hot pocket in a microwave and I don't understand like why it's funny, but apparently are like people are like I have people like give me like death threats and then I also have people like you know like, you know, LOL, dude, funny stuff. I mean, I have no idea what I was doing. Uh, but it is what it is. I, I just don't understand why somebody would give you a death threat over a hot pocket. Like and they deleted I mean, their comment. They deleted their comment. I was like, I was cool with it, whatever. It was like, dude, like why? I think they were like, I think the comment read something like, you just wasted 15 seconds of my life. I hope you like get cancer or something. I was like, whoa, like, whoa, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Give me a break, pal. I'm just, you know, goofing off, giving some little tomfoolery. Yeah. I guess it must have been the Totino's Pizza Roll Master Race we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. And the, hey, look, man, no disrespect, man. But those are good too, man. I see both sides of the coin. So I feel you, bro. I feel you. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You know, recently you put out a really good video about uh, four reasons why you didn't like the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I mean, you do like it from what I understand still, but you had these four major complaints, I guess, with this uh, particular system. Uh, can right. you elaborate uh, maybe a little bit on some of your reasons? Like, you mentioned the controller, which is one thing I disagreed with. I actually liked the controller quite a bit. So, can so maybe, do, you, do you have a pro controller, though? I do not. I've never really felt the need to because I like the regular controller, man. Um, well, you I mean, fair enough, dude. I mean, like, I, 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 and honestly, in all retrospect, like, I don't really 100% hate the controller. Um, it's just like, it just, it just to me, like, I have, uh, I have big hands. And it just like it's not it's not super comfortable, but for some if and odd reason, like when it's in portable mood, like dude, I'm all it's it's all game. It's it's completely cool, man. I have absolutely no problem with it. But when it's in that like little compact mode with the little thing that you slide on to the little, uh, what, I don't even know what you call it, uh, the uh, Joy-Con grip. The Joy-Con grip. When you slide it onto that, like it just feels so compact and just kind of abstract, and like it's just. I mean, I like the Joy Cons themselves, like why they're like it, it was like let's just take you you take that thing out of the equation and you use the Joy Cons by themselves without them being like fixed to that grip thing. I think they're not too bad. 
Uh, but with, with them being on that grip thing, like they're just so confined and like my hand doesn't wrap around it very well. I like to use the bumpers and the triggers. And I think it might have something to do with me like being terrible at Splatoon too. I think that's that might be a big part of it. Um, Splatoon 2, here's the thing, man. I, I can I can usually be the top inker on my team, but when it comes on a one-on-one like uh, confrontation, dude, I die every time. I die every time. Uh, it's something about like the motion, not the motion controls. I don't use the motion controls and probably that's the, why I suck at it, but it's just the controls on it, man. I just, I'm not feeling it. Uh, but every time I've used it in dock mode where I use that as my primary controller, I just, I don't dig it, man. I don't like it at all. Oh yeah, no doubt. For anybody that's listening to the podcast, I'm going to drop a link in the description of the podcast, whether you're listening to it on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you're listening to, I'm going to drop a link in the description for this guy's channel. So maybe um, we can get one more subscriber so he can hit that magical 100 mark. Let's fucking do it, man. Yeah. Let's go. If he doesn't already, of course, hit it. In which case, I'll go ahead and unsub from you just so that you can hit it again. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Even you, hey, YouTube, I, I did hit 100 subscribers, but I guess some guy was like, nah, dude, you don't deserve it. And unsubscribe with me. And I think I got that like official YouTube email. And I was like, what? Like, I checked my channel. And I was like, oh, I'm back down the. Not that's cool man it's cool it's cool. oh yeah i got you there <laughs> so let's talk about some games you recently have been playing um now i think i already know that you're probably only going to talk about one game i would imagine right is that am i right on that uh pretty much pro okay. probably all right so let me go ahead and start it off then because i have more than one game to talk about and i don't want this segment to be like filled with just me constantly talking like after you talk about your one game <laughs> So, um, I actually been playing some retro release recently. Okay. And, uh, you know, I busted out the retro arch on my PC. That's my preferred way to emulate, by the way, is retro arch. It's pretty much essentially the same as like the retro pie, except, you know, it's retro arch. It's just, that's the name of the emulator, uh, essential for the PC. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was, I decided, you know what? There's a game I never beat as a kid that I liked, but I want to see like what this game really has to offer. And this was a game that, you know, I, when after playing The Legend of Zelda, I was really into these types of games. I think you might know possibly where I'm going with, at least if you've been listening to me on uh, Twitter at all. Uh, but that game is Willow for the uh, NES. Have you ever played that game? I know the movie, but I don't know the uh, game on the NES. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, the movie, of course. Yeah, the movie is classic, dude. I love that movie. I've oh, been yeah, a absolutely. fan since I was a kid. Um it, it, it's really weird because it's like George Lucas's take on Lord of the Rings, you know, which is just really interesting uh, with, with the way the movie played out. You know, it is really well done for the time. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cheesy. It's got some hokey parts, but it's got so much nostalgia and charm to it. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. No, I mean, I know the movie. Like, I, didn't, I mean, you know, when it comes to NES, like, I, that's kind of, like, super far behind me. Like, I don't really play, I don't even look out for things like that or even try to go back and relive some of those things because I feel like I'm just kind of in the new age type thing. Uh, but, no, like, I mean, I enjoy retro to a degree, but, like, I, I will find myself if I do play retro, it's 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 probably for a brief amount of time, and I'm like, yeah, I'd rather play something else. Yeah, come on, man. You got to respect the classics, right? <laughs> oh, I do. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I mean, there's certain games where, like, I, I appreciate them and I, I'll go back and play them, like, for shits and giggles and play with them or et cetera, et cetera. But nah, man, to be fair and be honest with you, man, I'm I'm, I'm like, I would not consider myself like a retro gamer. Like, I, I don't. I really don't. I got you. So, OK, so you got the plot of the movie in Willow where mm -hmm. you have uh, Willow, of course, that's played by Warwick Davis and you have Mad Mardigan, who's played by Val Kilmer. He's kind of like the hero of the movie in a way, even though it's not titled Mad Mardigan. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's like the guy that saves a day ultimately. And that, um, you know, he's that tragic hero uh, that, you know, is the one that has the ability to save the day. What's really interesting about this game is you do not play as him. You actually play as Willow. And uh, this game is in a top-down perspective, kind of like the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, but that's where the differences kind of start. <laughs> this game doesn't really have that much in common with the Legend of Zelda, outside of like the top-down perspective and the use of items and magic and crap like that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So first of all, 
like I said, it kind of it does follow the movie's plot to a degree, but it does deviate as well since you're essentially Willow kind of traveling by yourself going on the adventure rather than going on the adventure with Mad Mardigan and the Brownies and everybody else, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it works a lot differently there. The graphical style is really interesting. It actually it almost reminds me of what we eventually would see with like Link to the Past and such. You know, it uses bigger sprites and the way that it scrolls and things like that. Even though it's still single screen, like the original Legend of Zelda, it just it kind of operates more like a later game in this in the franchise, I guess you could say. And uh, this game has a ton of screens too. Like it's huge. Like you think about like the original Legend of Zelda, where you can explore like the overworld map, and it's like maybe eight by twenty in terms of the size of the screen. Mm -hmm. The map in this game is like way bigger, and it like has a lot of interconnecting points. Like you can go into a dungeon in one area and you can come out on the overworld in a different part of the map. And, you know, it's like got like a whole bunch of tunnels and things like that to kind of link together uh, to where you can travel. I know I'm doing a really terrible job uh, explaining this game, but no, uh, I kind of, I kind of got you, but you know, still, like I said, like uh retros, like just look, I respect it. I played it. I feel like I just like to be in the, the new thing, you know what I mean? I got gotcha. uh, you. Okay, just, that, that's just that's just me. I, I mean, I I I like I said, I I do go back and play like some of the retro games, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like if I like, uh, maybe I missed out on them, mm -hmm. especially well, if someone comes to me like, dude, you missed out on something special, then yeah, I'll go back and I'll I'll, I'll try to at least capture some of like what they're saying just to get the perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I beat it or et cetera, et cetera, but I'll, I'll try it out. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think this game really is special with the way it's designed. Uh, for for one, I mean, I don't know how many RPG ga type games or you know those kinds of games you played from back then. You know, I got into it much later, much later. Yeah, like I mean, games like Legend of Zelda, as good as they are, they had a lot of cryptic crap that you kind of just had to stumble upon, or you had to look at like Nintendo Power magazines and things like that, you know, to kind of try to figure out where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do. You know, or in my case, you know, I recently beat, re, you know, rebeat that game like a year or so ago. You mm -hmm. know, I remembered a lot of crap as I was playing through the game, but this game is a lot easier to play than most of those kinds of games on the NES. It's, um, I mean, you don't get like modern conveniences like saving anywhere or uh, you don't get like quest lines and check you know, like, you know, maps to tell you exactly where to go and stuff like that. You don't get that kind of modern convenience, but the game does give you, if you're paying attention, it gives you everything that you need to advance in the game. You don't have to look at any strategy guides or walkthroughs on the internet or anything, really. I mean, th there are a couple of cryptic things in the game, but they're pretty easy to stumble upon with a little bit of exploration. So I won't fault it too much. It's none of this, like... Castlevania Simon's Quest stuff where you have to crouch against a wall for like 10 seconds for a tornado to carry. Yeah, dude, like, <laughs> and like, but I'm saying like there's games like, you know, I mean, in, in, in the game you're talking about, like if it's more self-explanatory, et cetera, et cetera, well then, you know, it sounds fun, you know, but something like, yeah. you know, any a lot of NES games, they had like a lot of crutch things like that where it's like, dude, there's no way I'm going to figure this out unless like someone tells me about it or I read a magazine or I dial up to America Online or et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's no way to figure this stuff out on your own. Yeah, Unless or you just, just do something completely random and nonsensical to figure it out. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, I totally get you there. No, this game's really nice with that, which is surprising compared to most games of that, that kind. I think that's why it probably ages better than most of those kinds of games. Another reason is the uh, presentation of the game, both the uh, music and the graphics are pretty top notch for the time. You know, this was a game, I think it came out in 1988, mm -hmm. but it's probably one of the better looking uh, NES games since it's got, like I said, it's got the bigger sprites, kind of like Link to the Past did. And, you know, they got a lot of detail to them. You know, there's decent little animations and uh, the way the graphics look, the way they use, because the NES had a really limited color palette, you know, like... A lot of times, you know, they're limited to having only, like, what, three colors per character or something like that. But, you know, the people that made this game, they really utilize that color palette as best as they 
could at least given that time. You know, they didn't have like the MMC5 chip or anything crazy like that. Uh, but, you know, they did a really good job with use, utilizing the color palettes. You know, everything looks good, you know, for an NES game, anyways. Like, you know, this game could have probably passed for a TurboGrafx-16 game with, like, some minor tweaks. That's a lot of... Dude, that's a lot of science, man. I, I yeah. pretty much play, like, Mario and <laughs> Mario or Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, or, uh, Super Nintendo, dude. Like, I didn't, I didn't... I wasn't, like, a Super NES dude. Like, I grew up with it, and... Yeah. Uh, I never went back and revisited or anything like that. Just like it wasn't like uh, you know like a huge thing. I mean, it was a huge thing for me. That's where I started gaming. Don't get me wrong, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I just know like going forward, like you know, I always I've always had this mentality where I just want to progress and like do the newer, the bigger. Uh, you, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, just want the bigger, the newer thing. You know what I mean? Uh, so oh, like I NES, NES is like it's a great thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I love it, but I, I, I to me like to go back and spend time with an NES game for me. Uh, not something like I would personally do. Okay, so you wouldn't really want to go back before 16-bit, essentially, then? is. I mean, yeah, pretty much, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't think that I would do that. I mean, uh, like I said, I appreciate them. Um, I like things like that. Uh, I'm not like, I'm not like, I mean, I consider myself a gamer, but I'm not like a, like, you know, Super Saiyan gamer. Like, I mean, I don't play everything. Uh, I play like kind of just basically how I, what I want to play and when I want to play it. But I will, I will say there are certain times where people are like, dude, you missed out on something special and you need I to go you. back and revisit that. So like, you know, I'll be like, dude, maybe I really missed something and maybe, you know, I need to go back and see like what someone's talking about. So uh, from what you're explaining from this game, like, you know, maybe like, you know, if, if I'm intrigued the right way or, you know, the right time or et cetera, et cetera, or accessible, I try it out. But if, that's where yeah. I'm getting at. Like, that's the type of gamer that I am. I got you. Okay. Well, if I was to summarize, like, I mean, I would say the original Legend of Zelda on the NES is still the best game of that type of game on the NES. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to take away from it there, but Willow is probably the closest to that. It's, I'm sure it's in second place, uh, just because of how well the the game is designed and, uh, like I said, the presentation is top notch for an NES title. Uh, you got a really nice sword mechanic. Like you actually do have experience points and levels, uh, kind of like in Zelda Two, uh, for example. Okay. And okay. Uh, you collect different swords as you go through the quest. But, like, let's say if you collect a new sword at, like, level 3 or something like that, when you try to swing that sword, you actually swing it kind of slow at first because you're not leveled enough, like, you're not skilled enough yet. So you can, the game will still let you use those weapons, but you're not going to be as effective with them. But as you gain levels, you'll get faster swings. Like, you can uh, attack better with the weapons, which I, I like oh, really... shit, man. Yeah, Maybe I'm not giving NES enough, uh, enough fucking credit, dude. Like, that, that, that's yeah. a stuff there man yeah it's a it's a pretty interesting mechanic it's uh definitely more in depth than most games of that era probably would go into it you know uh and it really it, it, it's i almost would swear like the, the sword animation like the way you fight with swords is a lot like link to the past also because of the way that you swing your sword it like swings like from left to right you know and it has kind of like a little bit of a wave thing it's very mm -hmm. similar to uh, Link to the Past. You just don't have, like, uh, the spin attack or anything like that, but you do get that attack, and you also get, like, a stabbing attack, too, you can do. Okay. So that's All pretty right. It's pretty neat. Um, I would say it's probably, like, a, if I gave it a 1 out of 10 rating, I'd say it's probably, like, an 8.5, you know? That's pretty... I mean, that's pretty interesting. Like, I mean, so this is, like, a game, like, you just started like uh like in like the last you said recently so it's like just a random 8-bit game you just started playing no no i played it as a kid i just never beat it oh so i, I guess your mission was like go back and try to play it and beat it etc etc right, right right now one thing that is nice about this game I'll, i guess it's a hindrance from back then because you know back in the day passwords were a pain in the butt to deal with because of having mm -hmm. to write down like the individual characters and keeping like a journal or whatever you know, of your passwords and games so that you can go back to them. You yeah. know, I don't know if that's something you're really... I mean, you well, 16-bit had some of that, I guess. Even, hell, even, like, the N64 and PS1 had some password stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, like Mega Man games, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah it's crazy, but um, this game does have a password system, but the great thing about a password system in today's day for revisiting those old games is those passwords work on everything. You can... 
You don't have to have the original game cartridge. If you want to play it on an emulator or a reproduction cartridge or all kinds of stuff, you can just pick up wherever you left off on any platform that you want. And you don't have to worry about writing them down anymore. You can just take your cell phone, take a picture of the password, you know, and then you just pull that right up whenever you want to play it again, wherever you're doing that. That's well, actually that's a super. That's that's a super strong point, man. I never even, even thought about like things like that. That's that's super. That's super. That's super fucking cool. I didn't. I never thought to put like two and two together with like, you know, putting the cartridge in like you know because in in our day and age, like I guess you know what I'm just used to. It's like it has to be exclusive to this thing. But no, that's that's you know I never fucking thought of something like that. Yeah, it's it's a really cool convenience uh, when you look past the initial uh, pain points of you know having to put in the individual characters and things like that to, to get the password to work. Um, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that's how I kind of played the game. When I first was playing this game, it was actually like over a year ago, I had a uh, NES cartridge that had like a whole bunch, it's a like multi-cart, you know, I had a whole bunch of games on one cartridge. And Willow happened to be one of those games. And so I've kind of played with that for a while, you know, I, I kind of got like a few levels in or so, you know. And then I took a picture of the password and I didn't look back for like forever. And then there's just recently one day I was like, hmm, what, what am I going to play? You know, I was kind of looking through my games. I was like, oh, yeah, I've got that Willow save that I still need to get back to that I was playing the multi car. I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and play it on the emulator. I put the password in, and, you know, it booted right up, and I was right where I left off. It was pretty nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your big game. This that just came out, like, literally, <laughs> what, like less than a day ago? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, man. Um, anybody I think who knows me at this point knows that I have like two obsessions. One's Overwatch, one's Destiny. So, um, the yeah, Overwatch Destiny 2 came out today. <laughs> oh, don't no. no, dude. Nah, just call. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get on this. Um, yeah. Dest Destiny 2, man. Um, dude, um, have you watched anything about it at all? Oh yeah, I've seen some gameplay and I've I've been following it kind of loosely because I was okay. um, I was really into the original Destiny, but I eventually got burned out with all the grinding and um, the way that you know freaking Bungie was kind of acting about the game. It kind of just put me off to it, you know. But and... uh, but uh, you know I'm willing to give it a second shot, you know, with this one. I'm just kind of waiting for the right time, if you know what I mean. No, I under I completely understand, but dude, like, I think that you might be pleasantly surprised, man. Um, I've only put in about two and a half, close to three hours into it. Um, they really listen to fans, um, and they even listen to like non fans, and they really listen to people who want a story. And this, I mean, like I said, you you can go to Crucible if you want to right off the bat. You can go into whatever you want to. Uh, but if you're following the story and like that kind of means a big deal to you, um, dude, it's there. It's there. Um, knowing the lore as much as someone like I do. And yes, you know, you had to get it off and read about, you know, certain guns and how they have a meaning behind certain things. Oh, yeah. That was one thing I hated about the first game. <laughs> and, and fair enough. And fair yeah. enough. And understandably. But like, let's say like, all right. So when you were a Destiny fan, like, did you at least appreciate the lore? If you did you. All right. So I guess a better question would be like, did you like the lore, even though you had to read it offline? Did the lore like entice you or impress you at all? Well, that's the thing. I um, never really felt intrigued to read into it because I, I'm kind of a fan of getting what you get out of the game, if you know what I mean. Like that mm -hmm. was one thing I liked about Bungie's Halo series was yes, you're, there are novels you can read and all this other stuff. You know, if you want to get more out of it, right? But the right, game right. gave you like a satisfying story. Um, from just the game, you know, you can play the game and just have a good time and not even think about anything else Halo, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about Halo movies or books or anything like that, you can just have a good time off the game, which is one thing I really liked, um, well, as far as story, I mean, you can still have a lot of fun in Destiny, obviously, you know, I really enjoyed the Crucible, uh, the multiplayer in that game was top-notch, for the time at least. But, um, you know, because that was a pre-Overwatch world, I guess, we lived in. <laughs> but uh, right. but at the same time, you know, like, 
the game it gave me that part of it. It gave me the multiplayer, like like I liked in Halo games, but it didn't give me the single player experience I desired. And that's one reason I was kind of turned off about it. Well, dude, like, you know, I think you might like this one, man, because they're really focusing on it very big time. It's mm -hmm. it's really it's very story driven. And I tell you, like some of the if, I guess I guess if you know the lore a little bit, too, it kind of helps. But like there's some of the things like the main villain quotes. And I don't want to dive into the story because I don't want to ruin for anybody who doesn't like, you know, when it's spoiled, et cetera, et cetera. But like he was talking, and I was like, man, that's deep. Like, that's deep. Like, because I get where he's going with it. I understand what he's saying. And uh, no, he, so I will say, like I said, I haven't spent time with the Crucible yet. I can't speak on, you know, the strikes, et cetera, et cetera, which are already going to be a, a, a monumental part of the game. Yeah. Um, I can only speak for the story part, but I will say, like, I feel like they listen to fans, but they all also listen to non-fans. It's a very story-driven game so far, and and like I said, this is the this is only speaking from the first three hours part. Mm -hmm. And I will say, like, so far, man, it's it's pretty impressive. It's very linear too. Uh, so far, and like I said, once again, only in the first three hours, it's pretty linear. I mean, it guides you where you need to go. It does pretty much everything for you. So I guess if you're looking for like a really good campaign with Bungie feel like Halo uh, controls, et cetera, et cetera, like I think you're going to get it here. Um, okay. It's, that, it, it's pretty good, man. I'm, I'm really digging it. That does sound very promising. Um, now, that being said, like the original Destiny, I don't know if you how well you remember the original game, like how it started and everything. Oh, I like, hated it. So I know, I know what your feelings are. Man. I well, hated it too. Well, the thing is, like, the way it started was pretty good, I thought. You know, I thought that it started out pretty nice. But then, like, the story and everything like that kind of took a back seat after the first couple of missions or so. But and I think Destiny's, Destiny's it didn't, like, primary... It didn't, didn't like, come back. It didn't, like, there wasn't, like, really any story until, like, the last three or four missions of the game after that. You know, it was, like, it was like a dead zone of doing a bunch of MMO kind of quests in a way, you know. And and it, it here's the thing about Destiny. Like I I I have already stated my story about Destiny. I think like several times. But for people who don't know, like I I bought Destiny day one. Um, I stood in a long ass line. I fucking bought it. I brought I kid brought it home. I played it, and I'm like, what is this? Why? What were they thinking? Um, I got into a really bad car accident, and I couldn't oh. walk for about two months. Oh, wow. And basically. I could not um, afford to buy any games. I was like, man, what's on my shelf? I got I to gotta play something that's on my shelf. I can't go to work. I can't walk, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I put Destiny in, and I got addicted to it. I got addicted to replaying missions over and over with that promise that, you know, it's like it, it basically my my synopsis about Destiny is like you're, you're reliving Christmas Day over and over and over. And you, you might get that present that you wanted, but you might not. You know what I mean? You might open up the Galahorn, which is like the best weapon in the entire game, or you might get nothing. Um, so it may sound like a stupid like comparison, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, but it, it was always the promise of you know working together with a team, having that communication, working together, and also having that promise of getting something that you want. You you know the lore about this weapon. You know like how powerful it is and what it can do, and you really want to add that to your arsenal for Crucible, or you want to add it to your arsenal for your next strike. And it was always like, you know, you, you were the cool guy. If you had the cool weapons, you know, or you had the Galahorn, like you were, you were looked upon like he was a, you know, like a cool, he's got the Galahorn. This dude is, you know, awesome. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's not like I'm trying to play into like high school statistics or anything like that, but um, I think there's just some element there of playing it, grinding it, et cetera, et cetera. And every time you played those strikes, those raids, et cetera, et cetera, I always felt like no matter what, they were fun because the mechanics and the gameplay were just amazing, flat out amazing. And whether you want to look at it one way or another, I think the biggest part of the game is the gameplay. And they weren't really trying to satisfy a story mode because they've already done that. Like, I mean, they made the Halo series. Um, and I think their main focus was gameplay because it, it wasn't, you know, a single player experience. And, it, it you know, it was more of a multiplayer, multi, you know, mass player experience. Uh, game you know that's what they wanted it to be and that's i think that's what it really represents to a degree i gotcha 
Um, that's a very good point. So I want to kind of just quickly go over a few things that turn me off to the Destiny thing. First of all, the way the game handled loot. You know, as far as like get your your drops, you know, your random gear and things like that you got from the enemies. I mean, I, I have a lot of experience with MMO games and the way that they do loot drops. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they probably tweaked it. I'm sure they probably have improved it. But like that first few months or so of the game uh, being out, the loot drops were terrible. Like you can literally kill like maybe 20 enemies before you get a single drop and it ended up being like a crappy common and you get like a little bit of currency out of it or something like that, you know. Right, um, I, I, re- I remember those days. I remember those yeah. days. It was it was so bad that players tried to find ways to exploit the loot system. That's where the loot caves came from. Oh, like, I remember the yeah. loot caves. Yeah, the yeah, short lived loot caves. But um, that. that was literally the best way to get loot drops before they did any kind of tweaks or anything like that, which was just sad because if you wanted the best gear, you would have to take advantage of those exploits. And then that just makes the game boring because you're just sitting there in a spot for like an hour constantly shooting guys, you know? <laughs> no, agreed. But like that, that's that's early Destiny days. Like I said, well, like, yeah. I, I fell into it like later. And... I, I'm sure I'm sure it's probably better. As a matter of fact, maybe I should take a look at it and see what, what all they have changed, you know, just out of curiosity's sake. Uh, but that was like just one of the first points. Uh, the second point was the raids. Um with the insistence on requiring uh, the person, the people to actually be on your friends lists and teaming up with you. Like you actually had to set up a group in order to start a raid. You could not use the in-game matchmaking right. uh, to team up with other players of similar skill levels. You know, cause I figure, you know, I, I, I get their whole point about, they want to make sure that, you guys can like work together on the same level, I guess, you know, kind of like team up together. But the raids aren't until the end of the game, essentially. Like, you're already beaten the campaign and all this other stuff. So, you should already be pretty well adept at the game. So, I thought that was very insulting um, to a player like myself that, you know, I have friends that maybe, maybe they don't play video games all at the same time, maybe not on the same platforms. So, it's mm-hmm. very difficult for me to team up with other people. Um, and it basically forced people to go outside of the game to team up with them, which uh, really, it, it pissed me off, you know, f- frankly, because like I said, I have a lot of MMO experience. I've played MMO since Ultima Online. I have never played an MMO that required you to go outside of the game to group up with people. Okay. And so All that right. was something that I could not accept. I'm not sure if they had changed that for Destiny 2 or not. If they have... That'll probably actually be a strong reason for me to consider getting it because I actually want to be able to take part in all of the events of the game without having to go through that uh, kind of like extra step. Well, I'll, I'll agree with you in the first aspect that yes, okay, absolutely. I remember being pissed off when the Vault of Glass came out, which was the first raid, mm-hmm. and I'm like, Dude, I don't have any friends. Like I don't, I don't have friends. Like you know, like uh, I've got, I've got four kids, and I've got you know too much stuff to do. Like I don't have time. And if I do have friends, they don't play video games. You know, right. um, or they're on right. different systems or whatever. There's all kinds exactly. of or different times of the day. You know, that- exactly. Like I had a, like a really good buddy. Like we were both obsessed with Destiny, but he was a Microsoft fanboy, and he rides that shit to this day, dude. Yeah, uh, he he does not stray from it, man. Um, so I got anyway, you. I played on P. I played on PS4. Right, because you so, got to get that exclusive content, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, absolutely, dude, absolutely. And I didn't know that going forward, but I bought it on PS4 because PS4 to me, like, I was killing it when Destiny came out. It was like the console to have. I got Xbox One later on. So here's the thing about um, not being able to, you know, just join nilly willy uh, in a in a, a a group to do a raid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, in my persp- in my opinion, and you can shoot me down here or not, but here's my thing about doing a raid. You really, and I know you play easy, you said you played MMOs, et cetera, et cetera, and I haven't. This is my first experience, but I mm-hmm. will say, playing a Destiny raid, dude, like everyone really know has to know what they're doing. Oh. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Like you have to know to do this, that, and the third. And if you don't, you're gonna have to be coached by 
whoever's telling you what to do and et cetera, et cetera, like you have to know what to do or you're going to fail. And there's no point in even playing. You really have to be on like your A++ game. And that's even on the normal modes. I never played a hard mode raid, but I've played the normal ones. I played, uh, I will say I never played Raid of the uh, the Raid of the Machine or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. uh, kinda, I kind of fizzled out of Destiny at that point, but I, I beat um, Crota's, I beat Crota, I beat uh, the, Vault, uh, the Vault of Glass, mm -hmm. and uh, what was the other one? Um, um, the Taken King. Um, I, I played all three of those raids, and and man, I tell you, like, you, there is no BS there, dude. You really have to know what you're doing and really work together, or you fail immediately. Like, no, no bubbles, no like little coat. Like, there's a little like, oh, this one guy sucking off everybody. I mean, and when I say everybody, everybody, like, not one person, not two people, not three people can carry that team. Everyone has to work together. Okay, well, um, I have a couple of counterpoints because there, for one, one of the raids that they had, there was actually a guy on YouTube that soloed one of the raids, and he successfully the Crota threw it. one, the Crota yeah. one. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, he actually soloed it. I am. I would definitely check that out on YouTube. So uh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. And the reason why you can do that in say Destiny versus not in any other MMO is because you do have regenerating health, just like most FPS games, where, you know, if you take enough damage, as long as you can maintain cover and not take damage for a while, you can get your health back. You know, you don't have to worry about people trying to heal you or anything like that, you know. Um, and you also don't have to worry too much about aggro. Like, Destiny doesn't really have aggro mechanics built in that you would normally find in something like EverQuest or World of Warcraft where, you know, enemies will try to go after whoever's dealing the most damage. And that's why you have to have tanks in those games, because tanks control the aggro of the enemies so that they go after the tanks and they'll attack the tanks because they can absorb the most damage. Um, it doesn't have that kind of mechanic. So, you know, it does, you do have your different classes, but they play pretty similarly. I mean, would you not argue? I mean, they do have different specials and some different gear. But overall, right. the game essentially plays the same um, about 80% of the time, whether you're a uh, warlock or a, a hunter or titan or whatever, you know. Or is that, is that that's, the... a, that's a strong argument, and I do agree. But I will say, I guarantee you will not find a person, a person soloing the Vault of Glass, and you will not find one person soloing uh, the Taken King. Okay. Uh, Cro the, Crota, the Crota one was an exception, um, and I don't know what Bungie was thinking on that one, dude. Like I were, I, I look before I even saw it on YouTube, we were, um, and you know, there's like, these websites where you can team up and I got on a, uh, a Crota's, um, thing, uh, a Crota's raid or whatever. And I teamed up mm -hmm. with some guys and we played and the dude was like, dude, kill yourself. I can do this by myself. And I'm like, I'll kill myself just for fucking fun and see if this guy can really do it. And he did it in front of all of us. <laughs> He did it. Oh, so that's, like, how, that's how come you believe me on that? Because you actually witnessed that. I witnessed it. And the dude, like, I was like, fucking slow clap. Like, dude, fucking bravo. Like, he's a way better Destiny player than I will ever be in wow. my entire life. I don't care how much I practice. That dude was a legend. And uh, I Become, mean, he became legend. Yeah, oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah. Uh, but no, I've seen it. And then, like, I was like, how did he do that? Like, I've seen, like, there's ways to manipulate the map. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and I get it. Like you know, dude, people sometimes don't have too much of a life. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. their entire being is to do something like that. Uh, but well, you will you will not find someone soloing uh, the uh, Vault of Glass, and you will not find someone soloing uh, the Taken King. Now, those two I think were phenomenal. I will even ex I will say that I will I will agree that the raids I think have gotten dumbed down over time. Because maybe some people don't really understand how hard the raids are. I think the Vault of Glass was too hard. It was too difficult. Because, man, like if you watch Crota or, or the Taken King, like they get dumbed down over time. Like the, the the Vault of Glass was like damn near impossible unless everyone was on their A game. Okay, I'll but, give you that one. That's that's interesting. That was the first one, I guess, and they probably figured, well, it seems like a lot hard. of people are yeah, a lot of people are struggling with it. So maybe we need to tone it down. Which I mm -hmm. guess could explain a lot of things because they were dealing with a completely different crowd of people. There probably weren't a lot of MMO type players like myself playing Destiny 
Me and either, there's dude. more um, people that played console shooters that went into that game, and they just wanted a console shooter that offered more than your typical console shooter, which is why Destiny, I think, was appealing to them, and why uh, competing games like uh, The Division and so on, you know, got released. But uh, I, I don't. I guess I guess I can get it from that point of view. But you know, I've done raids in WoW in uh, Final Fantasy XIV. I'm not too impressed with the Destiny raids after seeing what those are like. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I, fair I, enough. I mean, I'll give you Cabal to Glass because that one is a pretty tough one. I've seen videos of it. You do have to be coordinated. Oh, but absolutely. But at the same time, I don't think you necessarily have to know the other player. You just have to be more aware of the way the map is played and how you deal with the enemies. I think that's uh, the main um, things to keep in mind. And yeah, I mean, I will say like before I ever went into a raid, dude, I watched like YouTube vi YouTube video um, and watch what I was supposed to do. And I guess if you do that, I guess it kind of like dumbs it down. Uh, but let's just, let's just take the YouTube aspect away of like being informed about a video game. Mm -hmm. And if you went in to play that game, like not knowing what to do, like you're, you're, you're completely a crutch, you know, completely. And you really, you really have to hold your own, but let's just say like you weren't able to learn those things, um, in hindsight, you know, uh, but no, you, you would definitely alter the team's like, you know, objective dude. like you would ruin it for everyone. If you didn't hold your own or hold your peace. I gotcha. Which I mean, uh, with some people, you know, they they just have to be accurate and good with their weapons, you know, to make it through. Because like, if you got people that really know what they're doing, as long as the other people at least are good with shooting and not getting themselves killed, you can probably make it through most of the time. Well, here's the thing about Vault of Glass. Vault of Glass is a little bit different. Okay, <laughs> Vault of Glass would select two random players and bring them into the vortex where you had to know exactly what to do like someone had to grab uh and uh the other two players would have to shoot oh right right because it has that puzzle kind of aspect to it right i so forgot like, about that's that, an, yeah. that that's another aspect of the game like like i said like i think they dumbed it down because people were like really like whoa dude like my brain is exploding like this is too much like dude i just want to play halo again and this <laughs> is not halo you know what i mean because um, i won't lie they, that's what i went into destiny for was another halo game i thought it was gonna be something like that and uh, it was completely different and that's why i bought it day one wasn't happy with it got uh, whatever happened uh, in my accident like i literally like i said i had i couldn't buy a new game i just wanted to play something picked it up and then i got obsessed with it uh, so here's the thing like i said it's it's a it's it is a challenging game like i said if you haven't played or finished a raid I would definitely do that. Like, I know it's kind of a burden to have to go that route. Um, but I think it is also to the point justified because the mechanics are pretty tricky. I think, like I said, they've gotten dumbed down. They've gotten a little bit easier. But like when they first started, you, I think it was justifiable, man, because there was a, a lot of moving mechanics in the game. A lot. I gotcha. Well, I definitely will respect that. Uh, maybe when I, if I ever get a chance to revisit the game, uh, that's something I'll want to do. You know, if anybody that uh, is interested in playing some Destiny with me and uh, doing a raid with me, hit up the Down Phoenix Show at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, I'm playing on PS4, so you got to be playing on PS4 also. Just heads up. <laughs> Destiny 2 is Destiny out now. Like, that shit's over with, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure it's probably long gone. Anybody that is remotely interested in playing the original Destiny is probably already moving on to the new game or they're about to. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, next payday or whatever they got going on, but uh, yeah. So I do want to briefly talk about a game that I've been playing that's more recent <laughs> than Willow by probably about a good twenty years or so, <laughs> um, or thirty years more like. Uh, Titanfall Two. Have you ever played that? I played it, beat it, loved it. It is quite frankly the best uh, single player campaign FPS in a long, long time, dude. Wow, that pretty much summarizes my thoughts on it. <laughs> oh, okay, so I want to talk about this game a bit. So you have beat... I have not beaten it yet, so I don't want to get the spoiler treatment, although I'm fairly close. I probably only have, like, maybe two hours to go. You know, if you if you can probably surmise where I'm at about in the game there. You said how many? Two and a half hours? I have, like, maybe two hours to go to before I beat oh, it. Oh, two hours? Okay, 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 fair enough. 
I'm pretty far into it. I beat like uh like three or four of the uh, dudes, you know, like the enemy Titan pilots or whatever. Right, right, right. You know right. what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. So, first of all, you know, I never played the original Titanfall. I don't know if you have or not. I, I understand I that uh, it was a multiplayer-only game. Right. And it was pretty much like Call of Duty with mechs. Uh, I know that's kind of like a really, uh, really bare-bones way to put it, but that's pretty much what it was. I mean, it did have other elements to it like you had for example the ai players that would run around on each player's teams and would so give you points right yeah so that was kind of interesting because it wasn't just the six on six or whatever you know it actually had kind of a like a war feel to it yeah absolutely. but uh but you know obviously with uh, a lot of the troops being kind of dumb <laughs> Which, uh, th that idea originally came from, like, Star Wars Battlefront, like, way back in the day, you know, like, uh, back in, like, PS2 era. They had that kind of stuff going on. Maybe not to nearly the same, uh, complexity, but, you know, they had AI players running around the map. Right, right, right. But this game, obviously, it adds the campaign mode. And I also believe, don't they have, like, also, like, that... Uh, what, what is that mode? It's kind of like a, almost like a, like a defense kind of mode, like a horde mode kind of deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they, they add a lot of new gameplay elements. The campaign, of course, is phenomenal from what I've played of it so far. I've been playing on the Xbox One, and I do want to briefly talk about, after we, I finish talking about Titanfall 2, I do want to talk about EA Access, which is how I'm playing the game. Uh, but, um... Uh, Anyways, I'm interested, I'm interested to hear about that. I'm interested, really interested to hear about that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you about it because I've got some good things to say about it. But anyways, Titanfall 2, uh, one thing I really appreciate is even though the game is really fast-paced, like the game, you, you can move really fast, and the game does have a demand of the player to be fast as well. Like, I mean, you can sit around and snipe in some scenarios, but for the most part, you have to keep moving. You can't really... The game uh, encourages that. It encourages that. Yeah, I mean, maybe not, maybe not to the same degree that Doom was with the keep on moving. Because, like I said, you actually can occasionally take cover and get your breath and, you know, uh, kind of work that way. Because it does have a regenerative health system, unlike Doom. So, right. you know, where Doom, you kind of had to keep moving. Because if you were low on health, well, you had to kill enemies to get health back. So, or have to find a health pack. So. You're gonna have to move one direction or another to to heal up so that you don't die. But uh, in this game, even though you have to move a lot, it's so fluid. There's just so much control. Like I never felt at any point like the sensitivity of the uh, controls was too much or too little. You know, like I always felt like I was in control of oh, that yeah. game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh. I don't know, maybe they have some, like, really awesome auto-aim system or something built in, I don't know. But, like, you feel like you're in control of the game, even though you're pulling off this badass, fast-paced stuff. And then you get into the, uh, the Titan, the mechs of the game, and it completely changes the way you play it. Now you're, like, this huge 20-foot badass, shooting rockets and, you know, big-ass machine guns, and you got, like, one of them that has, like, a sword. That one's really cool. It has a sword and a shotgun, which is awesome, you know. It's like a great combo. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's just all kinds of really cool titans. There's a, um, I just got that one, the sniper rifle one, which is really awesome. Um, it's a little tricky to use, but that, that titan is awesome. I will uh, say, I, I really love the, the, the fact that, like, it kind of, like, gave you, like, a Star Fox vibe at the same point where it was, like... Oh no, he's too good. What is he doing? Oh no! Ah! Like he like it. Boxes would pop up like the little uh, voices next to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I like that. I really appreciate that. Like I feel like they gave like a more element. Like, dude, I'm, I'm killing this dude. Like you know, he's he's filming my effects. Like you know, he 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 understands how good I am. You know, like it gave you like you like more of a sense of like. You're just destroying this uh, whole enemy opposition. You know what I mean? Oh, like to have the enemies like overreact to everything. Yeah, exactly, whenever... exactly. Yeah. I thought that. I thought that was a really cool element too. That's that's always, that's always classic. That I mean, that's been in a lot of shooters since Wolfenstein 3D, though. <laughs> 
I know, but know? still, like, for them to have, like, only in the mech mode would you get something like that. But I just appreciated, like, they would throw that in there, too. Like, I feel like it just gave me, like, that over, that over sense of, like, uh, I'm dude, like, I'm killing this, you know. But, like, uh, to get to your point, though, like, I will say, like, I do think the game kind of, like, hands a lot to you. But sometimes, like, I don't think that's, like, a really necessarily a bad thing. Like, you know, there's no there's no part in a game being difficult just to be fun. Like, if it's easy and intuitive and kind of handing it to you, like, just to make it fun, there's nothing wrong with that. And, I mean, if you want a challenge, there are multiple difficulty levels, right. you know. So, right. I mean, you can totally amp it up if you really need to amp it up you know if you need your little dark souls experience with your fps but no like i don't i mean even still like i mean like what you were saying like i would love like to just like there's a staircase like i'd just glide up the wall come off there's like three soldiers like pop them down run over here jump off of this like it was it was so intuitive it felt like it, it made you feel like you were completely like it made you feel like you were that, like you were, exp like you, you were doing, you were controlling every aspect of that game. I loved it, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been really great. And I also like the twist about the device. Like when you get the device, I think it's about roughly halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. That added an entirely new dynamic to the way you were playing, you know, that was it really cool. It made me feel like early 2000 shooters, like uh, the story, uh, you know, about you, like, uh, connecting with your robot and et cetera, et cetera. It, to me, it just gave me this like early 2000 shooter vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, the story mode, by the way, um, I just, I, it just made me feel like, you know, I was experiencing something great. Um, but it had like, it has like the dynamics and the cinematics of a modern game too. You know, it's not like a, a cheese fest, like games back no, then. No, no, no. Right, right, right. But I still like, it just like, it gave me like a, Here's my thing, like I, I, I will or you know, I love open world games, et cetera, et cetera. But dude, I will not say like I have not I I have fallen in love with like very linear games and having that guided direction on where to go, who to shoot, and what to do. I kind of like to be directed because sometimes I don't like to think too much a lot nowadays, like when I play games. I just want to jump in and shoot everybody in the face and keep moving forward. I want to learn the story very quickly. Um, I don't like to think too much, you know. Not because I'm a retard or anything like that, but um, I just like, you know, sometimes it's, it's it's great to just like not to think too much, just to have mindless, you know, shooting fun. You know what I mean? Okay. So I guess you're probably not the kind of guy I'll be playing Civ 5 with anytime soon. Like, I don't got nothing against like games that make you think too much. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But in my day and age, like I have four kids to take care of. Um, I've, got, I've got a very demanding job. So it's like sometimes when I play games, like... I just want to jump in and have fun. You know what I mean? And I think Titanfall 2 is like the very, very fine division of just jumping in and having fun. Just legitimate, straightforward, linear fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I really look forward to the conclusion of the game. And then I'll probably check out some multiplayer and stuff like that. But I do want to touch on the EA Access, which is how I'm playing the game right now. Okay. So okay. EA Access, it's a subscription service, kind of like... I guess you could say it's similar to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, where you pay like a monthly or yearly fee and you get some free games and things like that. This right. works completely different from those. Obviously, play PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, if you want to play online, you'll need those. You know, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Unless you're playing like a free to play MMO, I think you could do those on like PS4 without gold or whatever. Or plus, I guess. <laughs> But um, in this, you get what's called the vault. And it's whenever you have the vault, you, you have every game that's in the vault, like that you can download right on your console. Uh, you can also do it on PC as well. You know, it's available on PC. But, that's why uh, I have because I have, I have the origin thing, and I was always oh, like free with uh, origin access. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was curious about what it was. Right, right. So, in the vault, you know, you have a variety. It's all EA games, I do have to point out. You're not getting anything that's not EA. So, if you hate EA games, like, if you don't like any EA games, maybe this is a terrible service for you. But uh, Titanfall 2 happens to be an EA game. And uh, you, they recently came out with both that and Battlefield 1 on into the EA vault access. They just added them, like... I don't know, like maybe a month or so ago. And, uh, you know, th these are pretty recent games. I mean, they came out less than a year ago. So that's pretty impressive that you can 
uh, sign up for this e-access for, I think it's like either $5 a month or $30 a year. And that you have access to games like that right off the bat. But well, shit, how many games are on it? Like, uh, from what I've seen, $30 a year is like pretty, pretty fucking worth it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's like 50 games that you can play on the vault right now, I think, uh, for both Xbox One and Xbox 360. And unlike that Xbox Play Pass, that new thing that they announced, it's mostly Xbox One games. Like, that mm-hmm. Play Pass is, is a cool idea. But it's like 70% Xbox 360 backwards compatible games. You know, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of Xbox One titles on that. But this is the opposite. Like, it's almost... I, I'd say it's probably in the other skew. Like, it's 70% Xbox One games that you'll get. Um, like I said, you get Titanfall 2, Battlefield 1. You get, like, the new uh, Dragon Age game, Inquisition. Uh, you have, like... I think Unravel's in there, like Need for Speed, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you get yeah, you got the newest Need for Speed game, uh, Plans vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 2. That's another good uh, multiplayer shooter. You get all the Mass Effect. I played Effect. that. I played that. That was pretty good. Yeah, you get all the Mass Effect and Mirror's Edge games, uh, UFC 2. If you're not a huge sports guy, but you like to play some sports games, but you don't want to have to like buy like a $20 copy of, like say, Madden 17, because, you know, you don't necessarily need the newest version of the game. You get all those sports games, too, with uh, EA Access as well. They just got, um, like, FIFA 17 and Madden 17 and all that. So, if you don't have mm-hmm. to play the absolute newest versions, and you just want to maybe play a few uh, rounds with a friend or something like that, you know, that that's, that's a great way to do it. You don't have to buy, like, a whole bunch of games from GameStop or something like that just to get a quick sports fix. So. Right. So that it's really cool, you know. I definitely recommend checking that out. I mean, if nothing else, you just pay like the five bucks a month. You can easily beat like Titanfall two and Battlefield one in that with that five bucks. It's almost like a rental, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, but I personally, I whenever I got it, I got like a deal off of CDKeys.com, and they had twenty five percent off the year subscription. So I paid like twenty two dollars for it. So that's that was pretty worth it. That's for the year. Mm hmm. Oh shit! Good stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, I definitely recommend. It's probably one of the most underrated values. Like I said, unless you hate EA, of course, it, they do have it on PC as well. The PC side looks a little bit differently because you're not going to get like as many sports games. I think they only have FIFA on PC. They don't have the other ones, but you do get like more of the Sim and strategy type games. If you're like into Sim City or The Sims Four, um, you're going to get those kinds of games on PC. Um, it actually does have some non-EA games on there as well. I think they have like the the Trine games and um, Oxenfree and a few others that aren't EA games that are part of the PC one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have I have it on PC. I have it on PC. Uh, and the reason I got it on PC. Uh, hello. You ever heard of Green Man Gaming? Oh wait, no. You so you have you have Origin Access on PC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh well, how much? How come you're acting like you don't know what I'm talking about? No, I have or I have the I have the thing. I, oh, I have oh, the origin. origin program. Oh, okay, I got you. right. But I, but I, have you ever heard of a a website called Green Man Gaming? Oh yeah, I'm very familiar with Green Man Gaming. I used to buy a lot. So, of- so that, that's why that's why I have Origin because I bought a Titanfall two when it first came out when it was still sixty. I got it for like forty four dollars, and then uh, you put the, you know you put the code into the Origin thing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's why I downloaded Origin. I, I that's why how I know the Origin thing, et cetera, et cetera. I, I know about the Origin access because I always like I, I scroll down like you know the del, the the cells, et cetera, et cetera. Like this is free with Origin access, but like I, I don't have Origin access. Like I just have the uh, the app basically. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, okay, that's cool. I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you got an Xbox One or a decent gaming PC, I definitely recommend checking it out. Unfortunately, it's not on PS4, but you know, it, it's I guess one thing that I guess Xbox has that PlayStation doesn't. You know, I mean, there's got to be like they, they have to have like various things like that, you know, to kind of like compete. Right, right, right. So um, I did want to actually talk, go back on the topic real quick about Destiny Two because. We have our news stories. Finally, I mean, we talked about games for like a good while, but hell, that's what I like talking about, man. Uh, but um, 
I did want to talk about the uh, sparrows in uh, Destiny 2. I mean, have you read about that article? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, basically, I guess it's a more difficult task to get your sparrow, which is, like I said, I haven't played that far into it, and I haven't gotten to, like, those open, massive maps. But you know what, though? Like I said, like, the only three hours that I played with it, like, Destiny 2 is, like, kind of linear at this point. Like, it's kind of really? forcing you... Yeah, honestly, it's kind of like forcing you in the direction that you need to go. Hmm. Um, it doesn't like give you like, this open map to go here, there, and et cetera, et cetera. So that might be like kind of a bonus perk to have something like that. Like I said, I haven't gotten that far, mm -hmm. um, but it, I could see like that just being like a bonus perk if that's the way they continue. If that's the way the game continues. I got you. Okay. Yeah, because like, so basically for anybody that doesn't know, uh, in the original Destiny, you get your Sparrow. That's like your little ghost-like uh, personal ship that you can go around in the terrain that you're able to summon. That was actually one of the coolest things I thought about the original Destiny was how you always had that vehicle. Like, even, you know, you didn't have to worry about, like, in Halo where you had to go f look for a Warthog and then worry about it getting blown up by the Covenant and <laughs> had to find another one. It was one. dropped off to you. It was dropped off to you. Well, what, are you talking about the Warthog or... Oh, yeah, something like that. Well, yeah, sometimes it happened, but, you know, like, if they blow it up, you have to go find another one. They don't just drop off another one, you know? It's like, oh, Master Chief, you know, you really suck at this game. Here's another Warthog, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, but in this, like, you always had access to your vehicle, and you were able to even use it in, like, some of the multiplayer maps like the moon, where you can kind of, like, get to objectives really quickly, you know, by hopping into your... Uh, you know your sparrow real quick and that way you can get there a lot faster instead of having to just run across the map right but in this game obviously you don't start with it well we didn't start with it in the first game but you got it like after like what the first mission or two yeah was, it, well every planet every planet that you went to you had to do a mission to get your sparrow on that planet oh did it really work like that yeah 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 it did. oh okay yeah i think i i think i know you're talking about now Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, you did have to complete the first mission, and then after that, you can sparrow and you, you had can... to open. You had to open the link to the sparrow, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay, yeah, I remember that now. Okay, so in this game, you have to either get the sparrow from various Ingram drops, or I don't know. You think it's a spoiler? <laughs> Talk about the other way. What do you think? Well, no, well, I mean, I think that, that that makes sense. Okay, so you have to do the Ingram drop, or you just simply have to beat the campaign. Not a huge deal. Unless you want to hop in your raids and patrols and things like that right away, which case... Well, for one, I don't think you can do that right away, because you have to level up your character and everything like that before you even get to that point, I would imagine. But I think and, also, at the same time, like, maybe, like I said, I've only played two and a half hours and maybe close to three. Uh, maybe it, the game is really servicing the fans that really hated those parts. Like I said, I can't speak for it, but maybe they were like, you know what? These guys do not like driving around this thing and doing objectives. Maybe they, they really took that whole element out of it, man. Like, really, you just drop into a mission and you're there. Like, you don't even scour to get like spin metal or anything like that to like upgrade your weapons and mm -hmm. if it did that like okay all right cool i mean you know i don't hate it but i don't love it either i mean um yeah. uh, trisha me i hated fucking you know spamming for like spin metal to upgrade my oh like, yeah you need five fucking spin metal to upgrade my shotgun like oh god dude that was actually oh. uh that was actually reason number three why i stopped playing the original Destiny. <laughs> so all, all the grinding for materials I just want to shoot robots in the fucking face, dude. I don't want to fucking scour the whole fucking Venus for fucking spin metal. Right, um, where you had to, like, just go around different locations in patrol mode to go into these various caves and whatnot or buildings to try to find the items you're looking for. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then, of course, they're not always there because they have, like, weird timers with the way they spawn and stuff like that. So, like, you know... Oh, yeah, that was the fucking worst. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean... Regardless, I guess if anybody's looking forward to those segments of the game, like if that was your cup of tea with uh, Destiny, you might want to rush through the single player campaign or uh, try to find a way to grind those Ingram drops first uh, before you worry about that. Yeah. And then, of course, um, 
I want to talk into some completely unrelated news about a game that comes out, I believe, next month. Um, so we have the sequel to Shadow of Mordor called Shadow of War coming out. And the original Shadow of Mordor was quite a fun game. Like, I mean, I was a huge fan of like Assassin's Creed 2 back in the day. Like, that was a fantastic game. Probably one of the best games of last gen. Uh, but the Assassin's Creed series has kind of went stale for me. This game takes that formula and kind of like revitalizes it because I really enjoyed the way it does combat. It's a lot more refreshing than Assassin's Creed. You still have the excellent parkour elements and you also had the nemesis system, which really changed the dynamics of combat with enemies. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember that shit. Yeah. So you have played Shadow of Mortar, I'm guessing. I never beat it. I never beat it. Um, I haven't either, actually. I need to get back to it. It got super overwhelming for me. Super overwhelming because I made too many fucking enemies, apparently. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> every, apparently, everyone hated my guts. <laughs> yeah, so, you, could, you could screw yourself with the nemesis system, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> um, so, no, and but the, the idea of it was super fucking impressive. The gameplay was super fucking impressive. Um, I loved it. I think it was so genuine, something new, so fresh. Um, and I love, and I loved it, dude. I loved it, but it was something about like, I, I don't know what I did like, or where I took a, like a, a wrong turn in Albuquerque or some shit, but like I basically screwed myself for like everyone hated my guts and like they would just team up on me in like five seconds. I was like, dude, this is impossible at this point. Um, so I don't know if like, I just like made some kind of weird uh, aspect of the game where like I, I just could not succeed. But uh, no, it was it was great. It was it was so fresh, so great, so different. I I mean, I went the time that I enjoyed with it. I really enjoyed with it. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, anyways, what this is about? There's an upcoming DLC uh, for this game. It's to honor the executive producer uh, of that particular game, Shadow of Mordor, uh, Michael Forge. I think it's or is it Forge? I'm not sure. <laughs> But anyways, he actually died of cancer uh, earlier this year. And so they decided that they're going to make a DLC character called Ford Hog Orc Slayer, who represents uh, Mr. Forgy in like a virtual form. You know, like it has a face that kind of looks like this guy's from what I understand. And he's this big bulk bulking dude that fights enemies with a weapon that is, um, it's basically an axe made out of a guitar, which is really uh, cool sounding. But if you buy this DLC, he will be able to randomly help you whenever you're struggling in the game. You know, like if you're about to get killed by a boss or something like that, you might get like a little uh, moment of deus ex machina where he's going to kind of help you out and, you know, prevent you from dying, you know, by kind of stepping in and, you know, hitting the boss really hard with his axe and then, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyways, they're selling this DLC for $4.99 and they're going to donate $3.50 to his family's fund to, I guess, help with the costs related to that until December 31st, 2019. I understand it's not the full $5 because they have to pay platform fees and things like that to Steam and PlayStation Network and so on. So... From what they're claiming, they're all the proceeds from the development of that DLC is going to the family. Uh, however, did you hear the kicker about this story? Did you uh, really look at the story, or if not, I so, can explain it. But so it looks like uh, there are certain states where this is not acceptable. Like where they'll just take the full, the full, the full uh, five dollars for this DLC. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, Alabama, Hawaii, Illinois, Massachusetts, Mississippi, and South Carolina are listed in the fine print about this DLC that the donations uh, from purchases made in those states won't go towards the family. Um, now, that's apparently because these states have special regulations when it comes to charitable donations that prevents WB Games from doing so. However, WB Games is still claiming that they're not making any profit off of this DLC, but uh, the thing is, we don't know exactly how they're addressing that. They haven't actually told us what they're doing with the money from purchases in those states, as well as uh, foreign countries as well. 
uh, because anybody that purchases DLC that lives outside of the U.S., well, that donation's not going to go to them either. And I don't know if that's maybe because of the way international laws work or what, but you know, that's definitely a, a, a serious problem since uh, this DLC seemed like a really nice way to honor this guy. But at the same time, with the way they're handling it, I, it probably, uh, it, it, it just kind of puts a stain on this game. You know, it kind of really makes me scratch my head, you know, because I really would want to support something like this. But at the same time, even though I live in a state that, I, you know, my donation would count, I just wouldn't feel right knowing that other people's may, may not matter at all, you know, and it's like, where's, where's that money go? You know, who gets that money? Right. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty that's pretty scummy. I mean, and especially to like try to make money off of someone to uh put their time and effort into like this whole uh monumental uh, I mean this game is clearly gonna be a franchise. Um because it's it's that great. And it had, I mean it won game of the year, if I'm not mistaken, right? Right, right. And I mean there was the other controversies they talked about, like this game having loot boxes apparently, and some of the other weird things that they're doing with it having like a $300 collector's edition, which that's kind of crappy. But I mean, I, I kind of chalked it up to that's the state of the industry today. You know, these companies are going to try to make a buck where they can. And right. uh, if people are coughing up that money, I don't blame them necessarily for trying to get that money because, you know, there's people that go out there and buy like $50 in loot boxes and Overwatch, you know, just to see if they can get some skin for Hanzo or some crap like that. You know? But, uh, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it's just this right here is, is just a different level of thing entirely. You know, like I think they should have either said, OK, you know, like for every per every time that somebody buys this uh, DLC, we'll donate that amount of money to this, uh, you know, to like, say, a charity to fight cancer or something like that. You know, like maybe the family won't get that money directly. But instead of, you know, like, saying that the DLC is a charitable donation, just say it's a DLC, but then that's, like, something they're going to do extra, you know, for every time somebody buys that DLC. I think that right. would have probably been a good compromise. I don't know if maybe they're trying to figure something out, possibly. But they're definitely going to want to figure something out because they might get a few pre-orders canceled over this, I'm sure. Well, you know, the Internet is the Internet. <laughs> they'll yeah. find any reason to up war about anything. I saw something pretty fucking funny today uh, where it was like uh, somebody uh, <laughs> uh, what he said he's like uh, oh man I gotta pull this shit up because this is some funny shit n n not to say like this is like nothing nothing to make light of. I do appreciate like you know if they re really and it's a nice gesture etc cetera, etc cetera, and they're really just scummy about it etc etc uh, yeah. you know if if, if you know, they're just like trying to make light or, or trying to make some money off someone's death who was involved with this game. It's pretty scummy. Uh, but there will always be something in the in the realm of the internet interwebs to complain about, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw something. Or here's this is what it is. I saw something funny today, and it was like uh, someone asked, uh, "All right, so internet, what are you pissed off about today?" And it was like we literally buy trash bags just to throw them in the trash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like someone will, no matter what the 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 equation is, whatever the mathematical you fucking goodwill hunting X Y Z number two plus three, like whatever it is or isn't, people will find a reason to complain about anything and everything, right? Right. <laughs> so, so I mean, are they, do they prefer to just put the trash directly into their garbage bin? I'm just and then saying, have like, to, I mean, and then have to wash the garbage bin every time you get like food that rots in there, <laughs> or you get like cat litter or any kinds of other things that would really stink it up badly. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, I understand your point, but I also understand like I'm literally buying a product to put it in the trash. <laughs> I know, got you. I, I, I spent four dollars, and I here, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's just, it's just kind of an aspect of the angle that I'm trying to take is that. No matter what, like there will always be a level of um, unacceptance, mm -hmm. uh, discord, you know, unhappiness. You know, this is unacceptable in any way, shape, or form. Like, we're giving three hundred dollars to charity. Like, well, you get you made you made three hundred and 
you know, one dollar. It was like, where's that one dollar going? Like, well, dude, I stopped by Taco Bell. Like, I just wanted to, you know, pick up a fucking, you know, beefy crunch burrito. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, I did some <laughs> work here somewhere, you know? Hey, that's um, fine. I mean, if that's where the money's going, if they're just going to get a few Taco Bell meals for the development team, okay, I'll be fine with that. But <laughs> but you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, no matter what any aspect I think that you take on the internet nowadays, no matter what good or bad comes of it, there's always this just, like, repercussion of um, hatred, upset. Like, there's there's always this defining line, regardless, that someone will find some defining line where they can just complain about something, right? I got gotcha. you. And since we're talking about the internet, let's talk about the news that nobody cares about because somebody's <laughs> got to talk about it. Might as well be me. So I want to kind of go into some of these things. So we've got Sea of Thieves coming out for the Xbox One and PC. Apparently, they're also going to be implementing a mode that might work on the Xbox 360 because they're going to have a 540p 15 frames per second mode. Apparently, the uh, one of the lead directors of rare said that people have actually demanded this I, I can't think of who actually would demand this maybe people that are still playing pc games under commodore 64 but i don't think this game would run on that so whatever but anyways if you have a really terrible pc or if you just want to feel nostalgic and play a game like you're playing a playstation 2 game well see if these will get you covered for sure and then, uh, you know, obviously you could play in higher def modes. You don't have to worry about that. You know, if you want to actually play the game and not look like ass, have at it. But if you do, they got it. They got it. So, um, in other news, well, what do you think about that? Do you have anything to say about that? I mean, or do you even care about it? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's not my cup of tea there, bro. Right, which is why it's in the news nobody cares about. And then we also <laughs> have the... Uh, we also had the uh, Nintendo Miiverse, which was an interesting little uh, network idea that Nintendo had. Well, apparently... Uh, since the Wii U is kind of like winding down, they're getting rid of Miiverse in November. And sad day for Miiverse because everybody's moved on to the Nintendo Switch. Well, I like I like to, like to like uh, take my kids, uh, little me people, and like you know distort them for fun. Like they get pissed off about it. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not I'm not a terrible parent. Well, trust me, I wasn't torturing them, but I'm sure like you'll. To do I'm sure you'll still be able to do that. I think they're just talking about the online aspect of Miiverse is going away, you know, where people can, like, oh, share the... okay, okay. Like, okay. like, where they can share, like, the messages and things like that in games. Well, that makes fucking sense because, look, 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 I have seen the most disturbing shit in my life on those things. Um, I, I've seen Luigi getting raped by a squid. I mean, like... Yeah, it, it, it under deservedly like this shit is weird, dude. Like people have a very abstract mind. They're gonna they're gonna make the most disgusting thing they can make out of anything in a way, shape, or form, dude. Uh, uh, so it's cool, man. I mean, if they want to take it away, like I understand, like it makes sense to do something like that. Okay, well, Meverse going away, I guess, has some sadness. But honestly, my favorite thing from Meverse was why can't Metroid crawl? <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, I saw some pretty funny shit in there too, man. Yeah, I mean there was a few funny things, but that was like the one that was the highlight for me. That was like, oh, lol, I must share this. You know, this is funny. This is legit funny stuff. Just look yeah, up yeah, why yeah. can't Metroid crawl. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, speaking of the Meek verse being discontinued, uh, something else is also discontinued as well. Actually, I think they already had discontinued it, and that is the original Xbox One model, the uh, big fat boy. As you will, you know, the uh, Xbox VCR model has been. That's what I have. That's what I have. Yep. I mean, it still works. Don't get me wrong. You know, a lot of people still play on it, but Microsoft doesn't care anymore, people. <laughs> and why should you? Well, <laughs> I appreciate my model, man. I mean, I got it. I, I got the Sunset o bundle. You remember that? Oh, the yeah, Overdrive. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole white thing. And, uh, Fuck it, man. I mean, it, it served its purpose so far. I don't got no problems with it. Yeah. Well, you got to get a 1S, man. A 1S is so much nicer. Is it really worth it, though? I mean, to to dump what I have. Not dump what I have, but I mean, I, at least that upgrade is really, like, noticeable. Like, man, like, 
now I've got the future in my hands. You know what well, I mean? Like, is it really that big a deal? It's not a huge upgrade, I guess, but I mean, you, you can get a $150 trade credit right now by turning it in a GameStop and you can get a used 1S for like $229. So you'd be paying like, what, 70 bucks? But you're going to have a lot smaller system. It's quieter. Uh, it is a little bit faster. I think the CPU is like 10% faster. Mm-hmm. And so it is going to have like a little bit better loading times. And on some games, you'll get like an extra couple frames a second or something. It's not a huge upgrade, but I mean, it is nicer. And you get the 4K Blu-ray and upscaling and all that good stuff. HDR if your TV has it. So, you know, there's there's reasons to upgrade to it, I would say. But, okay. um, you know, I don't know. It, it's if you're satisfied with your original model, you know, have at it. It's just, you know, way I does see it. A, uh, does it have an HDMI in on the back of that one? Oh, it's got, yeah, it's got everything that, well, it's got everything except for it doesn't have the connect port. So if you do want to use the connect, you have to get the separate adapter for it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, so I don't know if you use the connect. That's not a big loss there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, we do have another thing. I don't know if you remember Taito, they kind of made like some of the classic games like Space Invaders and Arkanoid and stuff like that. You know, like they kind of been irrelevant for a while, but they're still kicking it. You know, they mainly do mobile phone games and things like that. And uh, they recently released a new mobile phone game in Japan. You know, like um, when you go into like your local Walmart or something like that, you have like when you walk through the uh, entrance, usually you'll have like that uh, little toy game, you know, where you have like the little crane that you uh, move and you pick up items mm-hmm. and you try mm-hmm. to cover it, you know, or you probably have some kind of variation like that. I mean, like every Walmart has these, at least every, that I've been to. Right. Well, they have a mobile phone game. I mean, it's just kind of cool, I guess. Although we don't really care about it because it's only in Japan. <laughs> so that's why I'm talking about it here. Uh, but um, you can actually play this crane game on your mobile phone. And if you actually drop a prize in the game, they'll actually mail you the prizes to your home. Which is uh, interesting, but at the same time, it's really uh, it's, it's a really fucking gimmick. Yeah. You take your fucking money, dude. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure it's a huge microtransaction trap, dude. I, we go to the mall and we go to like you know we see the things in Walmart, and like uh, my oldest son, he's like, I think I can do it, dude. I think I can win this shit. And I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, there's no way to win this. It's gonna take your money, and then it's gonna laugh at you. When it's done. Like that's what the design of these games are. He's like, nah, man, I got this shit, dude. I got it. It's like he's like, give me, give me a dollar. I'm like, no, there's no way in hell I'm giving you a dollar to wasting this stupid ass machine with a plunger that comes to play some Yeezys. That's the one that we have at our mall. It's like you can shoot a plunger at this box and apply Yeezys, some yeah. fucking Yeezys. And I'm like, there's no way in fuck this plunger could pull a box of tennis shoes through a fucking sleeve. Like, there's no way this is happening for you, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know, but he like, believes it, man. But he, these kids, they believe it for some reason. Like they have, like it's like they have the juice, man. Like they, they got, they got the power. And I'm like, you're just stupid, man. There's no way this is happening. Oh yeah, of course. And uh, the last news that we've got here. Um, so apparently, EA is making a new FIFA game for the Nintendo Switch. It's their only game that they have announced so far for the Switch. And they've already confirmed that they're going to come out with more FIFA games. They're not going to... They, they claim that they're not going to flake on us like they did the Wii U. And just, like, bail after a couple of games and then, like, see ya! You know, like, when it's not even out in the market a year. They claim they're not going to do that. But, um... I don't know, like... I don't think people really care. You know, if you really Apparently want your... There's, there's a, there, I think there is a large people who really... Damn people. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's just, are they playing on the Switch? That's a thing. Mm, no, no, no. These are they, they, look. These are like. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. This is like nothing, you know, crazy or anything. But this is a lot. I think a lot of uh, European European people who play this shit. Um, because nobody gives a fuck about that shit here. Um, there are a few people who like probably immigrated over here from Europe or Bosnia, et cetera, et cetera, from Africa, and they love football and they'll probably buy that shit on their PS4, or Xbox One. But honestly, I don't think I don't think really about it. That's not a big fucking deal. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to see EA support the Switch more. I just would like to see them support it with games that people that own the Switch would actually buy. Right. You know, because, like, with the Wii U, we had the situation where you got Madden and FIFA at launch, as well as Mass Effect 3, 
Madden and FIFA came out after the other system versions, so the people that wanted to play those games, they already did. And then with Mass Effect 3, well, at the same time that came out, Mass Effect Trilogy came out for both the uh, PS3 and Xbox 360, which included all three games for the same price that the one game on the Wii U was. So then it's like, well, duh, nobody's going to buy these games. That's why your games didn't sell EA. And then EA's like, oh, nobody bought our games, so we're not going to make games for you guys anymore. Well, maybe if you guys would have released, say, Dead Space 3 at launch, along with the 360 and PS3 versions, and people still didn't buy it, okay, maybe you'd have a case, but, you know, you guys put absolutely no effort into it. And uh, until you decide to turn that around, I don't really care if there's more FIFA coming or not, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just not a sports guy or, or sports yeah. game guy at all, so. Right. And, I mean, that's that's kind of my perspective, too. I mean, I'm I, I in, in a way, I am glad to see that they're not just going to make just the one game if their claim is not completely bogus. But at the same time, where's the non-FIFA games that you guys got coming out? Where are those at, EA? Right. And since we're on the Nintendo thing, did you hear about the... Uh, you know, so, Nintendo apparently is in a little bit of patent trouble lately. So, I mean, a couple weeks back... They uh, apparently got litigated uh, from a company, I think, called GameVice. Claiming that Nintendo infringed on their patent for the Switch. That the Switch's controller design infringed on GameVice's patent. Now, previously, Nintendo had um, been supposedly infringing on another patent for the original Wii. And apparently, Nintendo has lost that case. They've decided to settle and they're paying this company $10 million uh, for this patent. I guess it's this uh, company that makes, like, uh, they, they, like, make designs for medical devices and things like that. And apparently, I guess the Wii, uh, with the way it uses the motion controls and things like that, infringed on their patent in some way. Uh, I mean, have you, uh, I mean, what do you think about that? Do you think that Nintendo really is infringed on the patent, or do you think it was just kind of like they're just kind of paying them off just to uh, have them shut up about it because they don't want to really deal with it anymore. Um, so I think this happens more times than we actually like acknowledge it. Um, I think that, I mean, um, there is, you know, you know that the, uh, Samsung had to like pay Apple like uh, what was like a million dollars because they... They are no uh, the other way around. Um, yeah, yeah. Samsung had to pay Apple a thousand dollars because they took on the advantage of the a thousand dollars. That's it. A mi- it was a million. It was a million dollars, and like they literally paid them all like in pennies or some shit like that. No, I mean, no, that that was fake news, man. <laughs> was that fake? Yeah. Oh shit! Well, I got suckered into that shit. <laughs> no, um, but, uh, let me. I will say that, like I will say that Nintendo like I saw like they're going to appeal the claim. I think whoever. The- um, and that could be accurate, but like the, the, what what it sounds like to me is it doesn't add up. Like this is not the same thing. All right, so maybe the design is similar, et cetera, et cetera. But like this is to test people's reflexes or something like that, something like that, right? This is like to play a video game. Like how is this in the same realm? Right. So I mean, I think like uh, probably companies sue other companies probably like a lot more times than like we probably even acknowledge um i think that this time but what was the what was the other thing like wasn't the joy con thing getting sued like was that just a fabrication or was that real was that not no real? that no that's that's a thing that they are currently in the middle of being sued about that's something we might not hear about for months or even years i mean after all this uh nintendo wii lawsuit it's been like years in the making from what i understand like it's, oh okay well this is like that's kind of new news to me i heard about the I thought this was like maybe just like the beginnings of it, and they like they were trying to like merge it into the Joy-Con thing. Uh, so that's yeah. actually new news to me. That's actually very new. To me. Like I didn't hear nothing about that part. Now the Joy-Con thing is completely separate. Um, I'm sure we're going to hear more about that, but you know, I, I just thought found it kind of interesting because like a lot of these gaming websites, like even the major ones, aren't really talking about the ramifications of this because, yeah, the Nintendo Wii one, not a huge deal. Right, but apparently, from what I understand, this game vice has a much better case 
against Nintendo. And they're actually seeking an injunction to stop the sale of the Switch in the U.S. Which, mm-hmm. um, if they actually succeed in that, it'll probably be like the biggest event like that ever happening of a device being barred from sale. At least in our country. Right. Because, I mean, they actually... Um, actually, I think uh, there was another instance where Apple was in had an injunction against them and they were barred from sale. But Obama reversed it. He actually used an executive order because of the fact that iPhones were too essential to uh, both personal and business needs. And he actually uh, reversed that injunction with an executive order. I remember reading something like that. Maybe that's fake news too. But uh, uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and take a little break. Uh, we're going to hear a little music, guys. And when we're back, uh, we're going to talk about some more stuff. So while Kamikaze takes a break, I want to go ahead and play you guys a song from someone called DJ Centronic. I'm going to have a link in the description for this podcast uh, for the download for this song. Uh, This song is called Unbreakable. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'm not going to play the full song. It's just a little clip. So enjoy. And so it's time for another rapid fire this or that where I take my special guest Kamikaze Soundwaves and I ask him some questions. It's a this or that. You have to choose one or the other. You have to be quick or else you're going to get the buzzard. Are you ready for this? Let's fucking do it, boy. All right. So since uh, we were talking about some gaming stuff, let's go ahead and just start right off. Nintendo or Sega? Sega. Sonic or Shinobi? 
Sonic. All right, Bubsy or Earthworm Jim? Earthworm Jim. All right, and would you say The Tick or Ant-Man? The Tick. All right, well, there we go. That's the rapid fire, this or that. Did you watch the cartoon show, or did you read the comics, or what? I didn't, uh, For The Tick? Yeah. Um, I didn't read the comic books, uh, but I did watch the early 90s show, which was fucking hilarious. Um, does not get enough credit. I guess it does, because people fucking love it. Obviously, that's why it's coming back. Oh, yeah, um, they got it on Amazon Prime now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, fucking, I mean, honestly, I, I think The Tick was... Uh, hilarious but it was always like i think mothman was like always kind of like brought it together for me he was like this introvert you know <laughs> like you know just very quiet like uh you know I mean? um to me i like i like i think i liked him more than i think i like the tick oh yeah i mean it's a really really good comedy duo because you have the tick who is so just uh ego- egocentrical type of motherfucker yeah, he's just- like flamboyant and clueless you know and then right, you have right, the Mothman. Right. He's so timid, but he like actually tries to think things through. Right, right, you know? right, right. And then, of course, you have like, all the other um, people as well You know, kind of mixed in there. Um, it was a really good cast of characters. I think that's one reason why I really enjoyed uh, that show as a kid. Yeah, Cause, like, absolutely. I mean, the, the total plot of the episode could have been completely horrible, but you had the characters, and they were just so fun to uh, watch. You know, So that's what really made that show. Yeah. Have you watched the new one yet or I haven't watched a new one yet. Um you know, it's one of those things like where I'm just waiting for the right time to watch it. Um uh, is it is it out now? Is it out right now? Yeah, yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure if they have like the whole season or if it's just or because I'm not sure if they do it like Netflix or if they do like a weekly release kind of thing. Uh okay, okay. But no, uh no, e- either way I haven't checked it out yet. Um I, I I'm aware of its existence. I didn't know it was out yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now that I know what it is, I'll definitely check it out uh, sooner rather than later. Right on, right on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into some of the last topics here. So uh, first of all, Nintendo apparently had caused some controversy somehow about the uh, news announcing that, uh, you know, apparently Mario is no longer a plumber. I mean, this story really kind of echoes like it almost reminds me of when Barbie broke up with Ken. You know, it's like, <laughs> like I mean, they they they, they kind of did this thing, and then people just freak out about it. It's like, uh, come on, it's just toys, people. <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell you how big the story was. Like my fucking oldest son, who's fifteen, like he was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, is it really like? Is it really like echoing like on the point of every detriment? Like everybody's like, I fucking knew it, or like you know, if somebody wants to debate it, he was like, oh yeah, I heard about that, and I'm like, really? <laughs> Seriously? Right. I mean, it's, I- it's apparently a big fucking deal. I kind of had a suspicion with it because, I mean, how many no-call no-shows can you get away with before you get fired from your job? I mean, I apparently mean, Mario be- got away with it for 30 years. So. Well, apparently Mario's a homeless motherfucker. I mean, the only home that I remember Mario- fucking hut and like Mario RPG, and, like it didn't even, it wasn't even like a studio apartment. Like it had no toilet, no sink, no nothing. It was like, it had like a bed and like some yarn or some shit. I don't ever remember Mario having a home other than RPG. Well, I mean, that's the Mushroom Kingdom. Obviously, he has a house in New York City, right? I mean, yeah. Probably, well, I mean, you know, probably plumbing's a loft. Are game, plumbing's are game. You know, I, I, all right. So, yeah, but still, like, let's be fair. Let's be fair. in the video game world. If you never saw the Mario series or the the show, did he really ever ever actually have a place to call his own in the game? He just like kind of showed up. He's like a homeless drifter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good point. I mean. He's too busy doing mushrooms and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they said he's now into racing and sports, which I mean, duh. Have you seen how many Mario Kart and Mario sports games there are? I mean, this guy is super popular. Why would he still be doing his plumber day job when he probably has millions in sponsorships, like millions of coins and sponsorships to race for like the Mushroom Grand Prix or something like that? Yeah, like when you think it's like uh, when you think like you're the star but it's really the drugs <laughs> you know, he's like uh it's not really not real <laughs> he's too fucked up on everything well it's he's like it's it's like with the story of like the original mario games like the original super mario brothers is the only one that apparently actually happens according to nintendo lore because you have like mario 2 it's just a dream mario 3 is a play of mario 1 and so on you know it's like 
He had too much fucking, uh, he had too many mushrooms and tequila that evening. Yeah, he's just a one-hit wonder that was marketed really, really well. <laughs> he's, just, he's just reliving his past life over and over. He's got nothing else to fucking substance himself off of. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of, I mean, because he, he was Dr. Mario, of course, because at some point he went ahead and either got his doctor's license, which I'm sure he probably got it from like a mail-off university, you know, and they just kind of mailed him a certificate, you know? Or um, or maybe he actually did get it, you know. Maybe he uh, spent all those long hours plumbing, saving, you know, a couple hundred bucks a paycheck to help pay for his college, you know, to become a doctor so he can throw pills at you. All right, dude, but what, what fucking plumbing did he ever do except for, like, that one... Uh, it's like a Super Mario Brother World where he's, like, just wiping the wrench on the side of the pipe. <laughs> he's like, you just gotta wipe it on the side. It's like, you know, what do you mean? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, like you're not you're not doing anything constructive. Like you're just wiping it on the side. Like how does that fix it, dude? I want my fucking refund. Let's I'm try to, the fucking police. Let's try to think <laughs> of the actual jobs that Mario's had over the years. Um, off the top of my head, I know that he um, apparently was a referee because he right. was a ref in a uh, Punch Out, of course. Sure. Yeah. And yep, yep, yep. Um, you know he, you know he's been a cart driver, go kart driver. I, I mean, did that really pay any money, or was that just for fun? That's always been a question. He really that. Well, there did some, anybody make money, or well, did they just get like he, a, a trophy for participation? Yeah, you got a point. Maybe that's not really a job. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's a hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby. Okay, okay. <laughs> he's gonna get. He's gonna get. He's gonna get edited on his taxes. Probably a good point for the sports <laughs> too. So any of the sports things, we can't count those as careers. Um. So yeah, there's the uh, the referee thing. Uh, I think I remember. I think he was also in that NES open tournament thing. I think he was, oh, yeah, he was a golfer in that. They might not have been paid there, too. Uh, Wrecking that, Crew. That, I will say that that seems kind of professional a little bit, though. Yeah. He was, uh, he, that, could, that, that, that could have paid off a little bit. They could have been playing skins or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, had some money on, on the table, you know, in the kind of the background. But, um, anyways, uh, there's Wrecking Crew. You know, where he's going around demolishing buildings. You play that? It's an old NES game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Dr. Mario, you know, I'm sure you've got money for that. Well, <laughs> you I know, mean, doctors legally, make a lot of probably, money. Pr- probably illegally, but still. Yeah. <laughs> still counts. Off the, off, off the books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, he, he ran a hotel in a CDI game. <laughs> Yeah, but all he did was, like, murder his guests. So, like, maybe he made money by, like, murdering his guests and stealing their wallets. I don't know. Yeah, yeah was, I'm not... You know, he was really obsessed with the movie Psycho. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything else that Mario has done, at least off the top of my head, that's an actual job. Well, he, he was a... Uh, he he played cards at one point, too, didn't he? It was, like, a game, something like that. What was that? What? Wasn't there like a Mario like uh, card game at one point or another where he was like the uh, the the dealer, the blackjack dealer or some shit? Uh, yeah, there might have been. I'm not really sure. Maybe like a Game Boy game or something like that. Uh, no, it was like in a uh, God. I can't remember what Mario game it is now. Uh, where he was the fucking dealer. Uh, it, God, I'm ready. Um, where he had to deal the cards or some shit. I don't know if it was blackjack, but it was like. Uh, right? No, what Mario game was that where he had to like deal? It was like kind of like five card draw, and you had to get like you know like in the and the rest res- in, in respect of like five card draw where you had to get like you know three mushrooms and two mm-hmm. you know something where it'd be a full house or some shit like that. I it gotcha. was something like it was something like that. I can't remember what game it was. Okay, there was Mario Cement Factory um, on the Game of Watch. I'm actually looking some stuff up online right now. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Well, here's the, I think here's a better question. Has Mario ever getting paid a dollar for the, what the fuck he's done for the mushroom kingdom? Has he ever gotten paid a cent, a coin in any retrospect of like, has he ever gotten saying like, Hey man, good job. Thanks for doing the shit that you're doing. Well, he doesn't need to get paid in coins because he collects a whole crap load of them on the way. <laughs> They're just like, just you, you keep whatever you find. You know? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, uh, that's called uh, thievery. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what? Have you ever seen that game theory where, like, they say like Mario's actually the villain? Did you ever see that shit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's something to like take a take a second look at, man. Maybe this motherfucker is more corrupt than we give him credit for. I gotcha. So really, the closest that I can think of Mario being a plumber is that he's had a couple of instances in working in construction. If we count, like I said, Wrecking Crew, uh, the original Donkey Kong, of course. He was called Jumpman back then, but clearly right. the, those stages are based on construction sites. And then Mario's Cement Factory. So Mario, I don't think he was ever a plumber. I think he well, was, was a construction was, worker. Was he fixing pipes, though, in the original, original Mario Brothers? Like when turtles were flying out of it and shit? Like No, they weren't no fixing no pipes. The turtles were coming out of the pipes. I mean... That's what I'm saying. Like, was, like, <laughs> but was, he, was he essentially, like, taking care of the though? No. Like, would you no, essentially they call him a plumber then? Like, maybe the turtles were, like, the equivalent of, the, like, big pieces of shit or something? <laughs> I mean, these pipes are bigger <laughs> than mean, Mario. These were gigantic pipes. I would say they were, again, like, air mushrooms. ducts and pipes. Everything's bigger when you're on mushrooms, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess so, but... <laughs> I know, though. Maybe that game must have took place after the events of Super Mario Brothers because they didn't have any mushrooms in it. They, they must have been coming off their high or something. When you think <laughs> you're a plumber, but it's really the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying it. Mario was never a plumber. At least there's never been a game based on it. He's But he, he was, was a plumber, dude. It's Mario Brothers and plumbing's the game. Come on, dude. Like that, that, that He was a plumber. And, and, and that wrestler dude told me so. He never even uh, uses a <laughs> wrench. There's not a single yeah. game that can think of where he uses a wrench, which is a essential tool for a plumber. I can think of a Mario game where the enemies use a wrench against Mario. Well, there's the Hammer Brothers, I guess. I mean, yeah, yeah, again, yeah, construction. Yeah. Hammers. Maybe you he was like so high, he didn't often. want to go to work, and like he was so high, like going to work was like a trip for him. Yes, yeah, he's so high that he thought he was a plumber. His but he was, was actually like, working on his he's like, Oh God, no! <laughs> <laughs> Get to work, Mario! Like, oh damn it, his fucking mushrooms are ruining my life. Well, so I mean, let's assume that Mario was a plumber. At what point do you think he would have stopped plumbing? I mean, it's not its not like he just recently stopped. I mean, he had to have stopped for a while. Nintendo just kind of was hush-hush about this. Okay, you know what? Super Mario Sunshine, he does have that water pack. I guess that's somewhat related to plumbing. But he, he didn't make that, though. Like, that was given to him. Yeah, exactly. That's the closest I, he's ever been to plumbing. <laughs> I need to do whatever the fuck Mario's doing, man. That just is a, 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 a great escape from reality, dude. You're like saving princesses and shit, and you're just like apparently like humping some poodle on the side of the road. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we're having a little too much fun with this story now. But since I did bring up Super Mario Sunshine, I did want to get into the main topic, which is about Splatoon 2, which some people theorize... That Splatoon 2 is actually an alternate universe if Mario fails in Super Mario Sunshine. It's apparently a post-apocalyptic universe. I mean, after all, those that. squids do look a lot like those bloops from Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about. So what we're talking about, we had Splatoon 2 come out, of course. Which uh, I had a lot of fun with initially uh, when that came out on the Switch. And it, it is a good game. I'm not going to... Uh, you know, cut it down for that. You know, it is a by the numbers sequel to Splatoon 1. It's pretty much more the same, but you're getting new stuff. You're getting new right. maps, you get new weapons, you get some new special abilities and things like that. I dig you the know. dualies. The dualies are really cool. Yeah, dualies are pretty nice, I will admit for sure. Uh, definitely a very good, if you're kind of like in the offensive kind of mode and you want to just like really run up on somebody and you want to just dodge and stuff like that, it's really cool. Yeah. But anyways, um, this game at launch, from what we understood, it did not support any voice chat except for this app that Nintendo had, this Nintendo Switch app or whatever it's called, that you had to download if you wanted the voice chat in the game, which obviously was a pain in the butt. I mean, who really cares about using a stupid app, right? I mean, especially when the app has so many problems. So I imagine most people kind of got pissy about it, but if they really needed the voice chat in a three-minute match, 
just get on freaking Skype, you know, or Discord or something like that. Like, do you really need to do that? Or heck, the trick that you were talking about, the way you said that you had to, uh, with the uh, Switch in order to use headphones, you routed it kind of through your Xbox One. I mean, I would assume oh, yeah, you could yeah, probably yeah. use Xbox yeah. Party Chat if you had other people doing that too. You could probably do yeah. Xbox Party Chat, you know, and uh, chat that way. I didn't think I didn't think about that, but yeah, that that would actually work fucking surprisingly well, man. I think you just came from there. Yeah, gave you an idea there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so apparently, I've learned recently that the game has actually had voice chat in it the entire time. So yeah. Built um, into the game. Like you don't have to download any apps or anything like that. But there's a catch. You gotta have like fifteen fucking thousand switches. No, no, no. No, that's not the catch. The catch is it's only when you're playing in LAN mode. Which means so right. when you're playing locally with people nearby you using switches. You know, where you don't need headsets. This Unless you're in a really loud arena, maybe, or something like that. Through your Wi-Fi or through, like, uh, just being, like, locally, like, we're in the same room and we both have a Switch together? You pair your Switches in LAN mode, which, which is a really nice feature of the Switch. It's something that the other systems do not have. Uh, it was actually one of the features that kind of helped out the original Xbox way back in the day. I mean, remember, you ever did the LAN parties in Halo? Man, those are great. Yeah, but, uh, uh, no, I, I never did it, but I know what you're talking about. But in LAN mode, voice chat works freely. You don't have to go through any kind of app. You don't have to hook up any kind of weird, funky devices. Nothing. You just plug in your headphones into the uh, headphone jack and... You can talk to the players, and they can hear you, and everything's great. Mm. But it really pissed me off, because Nintendo kept insisting that they could not do it in the game. They could not do it. You had to download this app. You had to get this dongle if you wanted to uh, play the game sound and the uh, chat in the same at the same time, you know, in your ears. You had to do all this weird crap. When it was built in all along, and you didn't have to do any of it. You know, that was like... I was already kind of pissed off about the game. But at that point, I made the conscious decision that I was going to sell my copy of Splatoon 2. And I made good on that. I actually traded in the GameStop. They had a really awesome trading deal. I got $51 in trading credit. Really? Yeah. Which, that deal's kind of gone now, but they kind of like, you know, they kind of go back and forth, the trade deals. Um, and then, of course, with what I just read today, it kind of like reinforced my opinion on this. Like, it made me feel good that I made that choice rather than regret it. Because there is the uh, salmon run mode, which is kind of like the horde mode of the game. Did you like that, though? Did you like it? The salmon run? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a really fun mode. And which is another reason why it kind of made me mad, because, like, I mean, they had, like, this whole, oh, you can only access it through certain times of the day, and it's, like, every couple of days or so, it'll just pop up. And the only way you would know is whenever you're first booting the game up, you had to go through all those annoying little things with the... I uh, hate that. I hate that it does that. I hate it. Which that. I get it, but at the same time, there should be, like, a quicker way to go through it, you know, like, where you could just kind of zip by it, you know, or something like that. Exactly. In, like, ten seconds. But you have to sit there for like two minutes going through all these messages. I will say, I will say though, the pleasant part of that, and call me what you want to, but the the with the the, I guess she's like uh, she supposed to be African American or the black one or whatever, dude. She's pretty fucking hot, dude. Oh, Pearl. <laughs> yeah, Pearl? the one on the the one on the right. Uh, oh, I think she's yeah, the she's one on the left. Yeah, I'm not the one on the the one on the the one who's a DJ who does a you know she does a little scratch. Um, she's pretty fucking hot, dude. I'll give I'll give her that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, geez. completely off topic, but still, man, she's she's pretty fucking hot. <laughs> oh, jeez, man, that's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's pretty hot for a cartoon character, I guess. That uh, it'll it, it yeah that whatever it looks like an eight year old. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, man. <laughs> Chris Hansen's like, I have the transcripts right here. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, Salmon Run, of course, is a horde mode, which is excellent. It's it's a really good horde mode with the way it plays. And it has its own it. and it has its own progression system, which it's kinda weird that it does. Like it'd be it'd be cool if you could like use the progression from that to help you out in multiplayer and vice versa. But it's cool that you can actually unlock your own things in that. Which I, I think is really neat, you know, for people that want to do that mode. But you can't always do it. You have to do it only on Nintendo's schedule when they decide to do it. Now, nobody ever understood why. But apparently, uh, one of the directors of the game, I forgot who it was, uh, he was talking about how it, it, the reason why that is that way is because Japan has a completely different philosophy when it comes to game design from like the uh, U.S. and whatnot, which is a completely bogus reason because like Tomb Raider is published by a Japanese company. You can play the multiplayer on that anytime you want. You don't have to wait for Lara Croft to uh, kind of have her hair p- tied up in a ponytail before you can play the multiplayer in the game, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, no, no, they had to uh, make this weird decision, and, and they're kind of standing by it. Like, it, it makes it sound like they're, they're not going to change their mind. So if you like this horde mode thing, you're just going to have to deal with the restrictions of it. I mean, fair enough. I mean, if that's look, you can't argue with it. It's their shit. I mean, you can't make them change it. Um, but also, I think like uh, I've seen that like people. Um, well, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch this shit because I'm not like obsessed with Splatoon or anything like that. But like my oldest son is obsessed with Splatoon. He's like, oh, salmon, Sal- salmon rushes out. Like you need to stream it right now. You're gonna have a million views because it's live this second. And I'm like. Dude, I don't care. Like, it's not my thing. <laughs> like, I don't care. He's like, look, people get a lot of views from watching this stuff. And I'm like, dude, like, I once again, I don't care. Like, it's not my thing. I don't care about uh, Splatoon. I don't care about Salmon Rush. It's fun to play, like, on my own uh, when it's in portable mode. Uh, but no, like, he was like, apparently, like, people like are obsessed with the Salmon Rush thing, like, because it's, exe- it's only available in certain times, et cetera, et cetera, where it makes it, like, more desirable to watch and you get you know, people get views from it because they they you know because you know he he follows all that video game uh craze stuff mm-hmm. um, I, I love video games too but he's he is obsessed obsessed with splatoon 2 he was obsessed, he was obsessed with the first splatoon so right right which i mean i guess you could say that this isn't the first time nintendo's done this i mean you go back to the first splatoon and this one also you have the Splatfests. And when you have the Splatfest going on, you can't do any other multiplayer activities. It's just the Splatfest. You can't do the ranked matches or the regular matches or nothing like that. You have to do the Splatfest. Mm-hmm. But that's a little bit different because that's like a once a month event. That's like a special event. Right, 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 um, right, right, right. And then, of course, you have games like Overwatch that have like the seasonal events. Like they had the Olympics event. They have like something else going on right now, don't they, in Overwatch? or The Summer Games. Oh, that's still going on in Overwatch. Uh, no, it, it's it's over now. It's oh, okay, over now. Yeah, it just recently ended, right? But uh, right, right, yeah. But yeah, they yeah. have like special events like that where they'll do it for like a month or two, you know. And, then and they'll, it goes and they'll away. do that. They'll they'll do that to like make you play it for that, you know, to get I guess their bandwidth or whatever, mm-hmm. see how many people are playing it, and et cetera, et cetera. But you know, they they get like uh, you to do that to you know get the skins, the the special skins and the special dances or emojis or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's no, there's nothing, um, I will say there's different uh, modes into it, but they're all pretty fucking standard. Uh, but I will say right. that Overwatch just uh, uh, announced that, or well, I actually played it, it's not announced it's happening, the deathmatch thing, which is pretty interesting, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, that's supposed to be coming out pretty soon from what I understand. If, if it's not already, I, I'm, I'm not a huge Overwatch guy, but uh, actually, I actually talked about that a little bit um, previously, you know, like a couple weeks back. But, um, it, the, this is different because, like, hey, like, like with the Overwatch, it was a special event. Like, it's something that, you know, if you wanted to participate in it, you can rely on it for that whole month or so that they're doing it. Right. And you have an actual timetable of how long it's going to last for. And so if you wanted those special skins and things like that, you can plan around that, you know. You can, uh, you know, if you spend whatever time you have free to play that game, you can plan around that. 
And you can also, you know, if, if you gotta pay for loot boxes, you can just do that or whatever, you know. But you have the opportunity per to participate in that regardless. This, the timing that they put out is really weird. First of all, it seems like that they do it like in 12 hour blocks. And at least for the US, they do it like in the middle of the night is when they start it. Like they start it at like 11 p.m. Uh, Pacific time or some weird ass time like that. And then they just do it for like 12 hours from there. Well, a lot of people are going to be going to sleep and then they'll go to work the next morning and they'll never get a chance to play it, you know? And it's not like they have a schedule on when they'll see this. They just randomly do it. So you can't plan around it. If you really want to participate, you just have to just be on at the right time, you know? Sometimes they do it in the other op opposite of the spectrum too, but you know, that is, it's just dumb, you know, I think. I think it's it's also to drive hype into it, you know, like, you know, limited, you know, whatever you want to call it, limited run time of this to, to not have like the 24 hour access because maybe if that game or that part of the game was 24 hour access, it wouldn't seem so appealing. Okay, I can get that. You see what Make I'm saying? Make a special like event thing, but you should at least give people clear communication on when they can play it. Like, if they say, want to no, say, agreed, for example, agreed, agreed. if they want to say, for example, okay, it's a weekend only thing. Saturdays and Sundays is when you could do it. Right. I could respect something like that at least because we would know when we can play it and we can try to plan around that when possible. You know, it might be difficult for some people to get some time into it, but they'll still have a chance, you know, because, you know, even if they're working on both days and obviously got to sleep and things like that, they're probably still going to get a chance to play at least some of the time. You know, they don't have to worry about it happening while they're in bed or at work or something like that. Yeah. No, agreed. Well, Destiny was really good about that. I mean, you this day was good for the. Uh, I'm sorry, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sorry, you got cut off a bit. What was that about Destiny? Like you know, you know, they reset every Tuesday, uh, but you would have your, you know, sometimes you'd have your, like your special events like for Sparrow Racing or, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah, the uh, weekly events, yes. Right. So, um, I think that does work to some degree. It like builds the hype up around the game and sort effects. And I also guess the players like, you know, something to be festive about. Like, you know, we're festive as human beings, right? Right. We celebrate we celebrate what? Like, you know, Halloween, Christmas, et cetera, et cetera. Uh Destiny was kind of doing that, right? I mean, they would like, you know, have like uh, the Halloween thing where you get the pumpkin mask and uh they would do um I remember when it was Christmas, like it was snowing um on the on the uh the uh the main uh your hub world etc cetera, etc cetera, the tower mm -hmm. uh, so i mean it kind of makes sense but it also makes sense like uh, or doesn't make sense for splatoon where it's like there's no rhyme or reason to when it when it exists or when it starts and when it ends you know what I right mean? and not not just that but they don't really do anything different like you don't see anything different in the actual town or anything like that you like it with the Splatfest, you do see difference because they have like a big party and Everybody's dancing and the music's playing loud and stuff like that whenever they do the Splatfest. But right, whenever right, they right. have the Salmon Run events, it's like the only way you have any indication that they're doing that is listening to those messages at the beginning. Nothing's different. And you're not listening. You're just like bearing through. Yeah, exactly. You're just pressing the A button as quickly as possible. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, kill accurate. me now. Kill me now. <laughs> Um, exactly. But, I mean, that kind of reaffirmed my decision to get rid of it. Like, Nintendo did, like, what you kind of suggested with, like, how Destiny does it or Overwatch does it or something like that. If they actually made it special in some way and also made it something to where you can actually rely on when it's going to happen, I might feel differently about that. But it, yeah, just I understood. Seemed, it just seemed really arrogant with the way that they're doing it. And th that was kind of the part, uh, uh, a, a point that I brought up at one time where it was like, you know, it, it's it's I understand it, and uh, I think you brought it up like Overwatch will does that. Well, Overwatch does does that, like, but like there's a clear, definitive, like realm of when you can start and when it's going to end. So you know, like where you need to grind if you really want these things, et cetera, et cetera, or this when you really want to play it. 
but yeah, Splatoon 2 was like, you know, fuck you, dude. We'll we'll put this shit out whenever we feel like it. Like that was kind of it's kind of a slap in the face a little bit. Right. So, yeah, it was a really good discussion we've had, man. We've c- touched on a lot of different things. So, I want you to go ahead and try to plug uh, your stuff one more time. I mean, do you do, really do anything besides YouTube as far as uh, content out there? I, I tried VidMe for a, a small portion of time, but uh, no, it's not for me, man. Um, I've I've noticed that VidMe, you tried VidMe at this point, right? Oh, yeah, I'm on VidMe. Um, here's the thing about VidMe it's like, I'll get like three likes on a video or three, whatever they call it. Like three, what, what do they have? Like as far as likes on than me, it's like, it's like a plus not, one or something like that. Or, exactly. But I get no views. I'm like, why the fuck are you liking my video? If you're not even watching it, <laughs> um, you understand what I'm saying? Like they just like, it's like, Oh, I wanted you to like your thing for you to like my thing. And it's like, no, like it's like almost like sub for sub. It's like, you want me to just automatically like your thing because you're liking my thing. And it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, you know, if if I, if you take the time and you watch my video and you appreciate it, cool. No problem. Uh, but no, like I, that's what VidMe has, has kind of turned into. It's like everybody has put their videos on there just to be like accepted, but not really like watching anybody else's thing. They just want to be liked and have all the, you know, the, you know, the love for themselves. Um, so anyway, that's neither here nor there, but no, I'm strictly YouTube dude. Um, so basically, uh, just to plug it one more time, like you said, um, nah, man, I'm all, I mean, you no, know, I do a lot of, uh, crazy things on my channel. I've done skits. I, uh, I do, uh, let, uh, do let's plays. I do reviews. Um, I do uh, just a bunch of crazy stuff on my channel, man. Did you know, however, do you know, I talk about games, uh, mm-hmm. mostly all my stuff is game reviews or, or not game reviews, but most of them is all about games. Uh, movies, et cetera, et cetera, wherever I'm into, man, like that's what that's basically what I put out, man. I gotcha, man. And uh, let's help this guy get past 100 subs. Let's maybe get him to like 105. Woo! Let's go, boy. <laughs> let's fucking go. Yeah, but no, he really does put some good content out, and uh, I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Um, but I want to go ahead and wrap this show up. Uh, this was Down Phoenix. And of course, I have my own YouTube channel in case you're listening to it on iTunes or. Uh, Stitcher or whatnot, and also if you want to listen to any old episodes of the podcast, because eventually the first episode that I put up and so on is going to have to get deleted since I have a limit on how much storage I can use for co- podcast. I do have a playlist on YouTube called the DP and Me Podcast, and so you can check out all the previous episodes of the podcast on there via YouTube if you happen to want to listen back and see what we talked about and. All this stuff. I had other people on, too. It's not just me and Kamikaze, although you never know, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, I but, subbed uh, the, uh, the, the uh, what's his name? Uh, Christopher Pico? Yeah. I subbed, it, I subbed to his channel off of your um, your podcast, man. So, oh, that's, like, that's good. Yeah, yeah he does yeah, some man. good stuff. I mean, like, I mean, we have a difference of opinions as far as how uh, game collecting and things like that are, but he does good videos, and so I'm not going to fault him on that. Yeah, but like that just goes to show you, like man, like you know things like this, man. Like it brings people together. Like like as you see someone like uh, the retrospect or what they think of, and like makes you maybe not see like their side or they have a side that maybe you didn't think of, et cetera, et cetera, man. But it's good stuff what you're doing, man. Like I said, like uh, that guy, uh, he came to sub off of, like your, uh, your podcast, man, because I actually like, really enjoyed you guys' podcast. I, I checked out his channel. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, that's good. And hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, Kamikaze's channel. And then, of course, like I said, check out the past podcast. Uh, I also talked to uh, Magus X1 and the Waste Zero Time. So, till next time, Down Phoenix out. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the DP and Me podcast. I'm DP, and my special guest today was Kamikaze Soundwaves. Soundwaves is spelled S-Z-E-R-O-U-N-D-W-A-V-E-Z, in case you want to know. But you can just check out the description if you want a link to his channel. Let's get him up some more subs, because he definitely deserves more than 100. Um, all the music, except for the little interlude we had with DJ uh, Symphonic, was played by 
Technoax, and he offers royalty-free music on YouTube that you can use for your own podcast or videos or whatever you like and really enhance the work that you put out. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, but I'm going to go ahead and sign out now. And don't forget, you can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, and YouTube, as well as VidMe. So till then, Down Phoenix out.